a pretty lovely, lovely good evening once again from here in Delhi. As usual, I hope each one of you are keeping well and happy and of course in joyful mood. So on such count, we start today's this particular session. As you can see flashing on your screens, India's 103 business combination and in the bracket I have written amalgamation of companies. Actually, while doing India's 103, you must know and be aware of this particular fact that there are two subtopics in it. One is amalgamation of companies and another one is internal reconstruction of companies. Why we have to study amalgamation of company reason being is that sometime in the question you may be asked, you may be asked, to do accounting in the books of acquiry. To do accounting in the books of acquiry, I have already told you so many times that when we do accounting in the books of acquiry company, neither accounting standard AS14 nor India's 103 actually is relevant for acquiry. It is not followed. In the last session also and even uh, previous one, we talked about this particular fact that when we do accounting in the books of acquiry company, no accounting standard is followed. Neither AS14 nor India AS103 as both these standards are related to accounting aspects in the books of acquirer entity. Only general accounting principles are followed for doing accounting in the books of acquiry company and through this particular topic, we shall learn actually how we are going to do accounting in the books of acquiry company. Now, why we have to study amalgamation of companies? Number one, to learn the accounting aspects in the books of acquiry company. And number two, actually, the reason behind actually un understanding the conceptualities of amalgamation of companies is that often in the examination question will be asked and the question will state, do accounting in the books of acquiry company number one. And further the question, let us say, has stated, do accounting in the books of acquiry company, presuming it to be a case of amalgamation. If the question would specifically state that you have to you have to pass entries in the books of acquirer company, presuming it to be a case of amalgamation, word amalgamation must be written over there. And if it is written over there, in that particular case, accounting standard AS14 need to be actually applied. And that is the reason why we need to actually have the knowledge of AS14. Is it clear to you? This is one reason. Now. Let us say question states that do accounting in the books of acquiry company and question simply further states that also pass entries in the books of acquirer company in the books of acquirer company. Now here the word amalgamation is not mentioned. So in that case, in order to do accounting or pass entries in the books of acquirer company, we need to know, we need to apply actually in days 103. Is it clear to you? You need to be aware of this particular fact that when you have to actually apply AS14 and when you have to apply in days 103. If the question specifically states that do accounting or pass entries in the books of acquirer entity or for that instance purchasing company in the light, uh, presuming it to be a case of amalgamation, then accounting will be done in the light of AS14. And if nothing such is mentioned, question simply mentions that pass entries in the books of acquirer company simply go by what we call India's 103. So we are already aware of the accounting aspects as far as India's 103 is concerned, but we have to have a bit of idea regarding what we call accounting is uh, regarding what we call accounting under AS14. Correct. So in order to understand the accounting under AS14, first of all, we need to be aware of two important terms. In fact, some important terms. One among them is known as amalgamation of companies. One is known as amalgamation of companies. That means in order to understand the amalgamation of companies, we need to acquaint ourselves with three important terms. One is amalgamation. What we mean by amalgamation? Presume that there are two companies, X and Y Limited. And we further presume that both these entities have decided to merge into a one single entity. Both these entities mutually agree to merge into a one single entity. To be very honest with you, generally two companies, correct, decide to merge into a single entity. Such sort of things come into practical life only when these two companies would be engaged in the same line of trade. Presume that both these companies are in into the trade of cement manufacturing and both these companies have similar financial strength. So sometime often such companies decide to merge into a one single unit so as to acquire the what we call complete monopoly in the market. Even though both these two companies themselves have decided to form a one single entity from the accounting aspects we will call X limited and Y limited as vendor companies while XY limited will be termed as purchasing company. Why? 
because from the accounting perspective we shall presume that business of x limited and business of y limited is being taken over by xy limited that is how we have to interpret it in this manner we shall presume that xy limited is taking over x limited and y limited in spite of the fact that both these companies themselves have decided to merge into a single entity but from the accounting perspective we have to view it in this manner these are known as vendor company Vendor company means the companies which are selling their business. Indirectly, it also means X Limited is selling its business to XY Limited and Y Limited is also selling its business to XY Limited. So that is why they will be known as vendor company and the new newly formed company will be known as purchasing company. Vendor companies can also be termed as acquiry company. They can also be termed as acquiry company while purchasing company can be referred to as acquirer company. Is it clear to you? Then there is another concept in this particular chapter that is known as absorption. Absorption. This is another important term to understand the accounting aspects under amalgamation of companies. Under absorption, one, what happens? Let us say there is a big company and there is a small company. This big company takes over the business of S Limited. This big company takes over the business of S Limited. So now, because S Limited has been taken over, so now the new company will be only big company because this S company has submerged into what we call big limited. Now, in this, in this particular case, S Limited will be termed as vendor company and big company will be termed as purchasing company or acquirer company and this company will be acquiry company. Is it clear to you? So in case of absorption, we have seen one existing company takes over the business of another existing company and generally the company which is taking over the business of the other entity is having a higher financial strength and higher financial credibility. Besides that, there is another term which we need to know under amalgamation and that term is known as external reconstruction. What we mean by external reconstruction? Under external reconstruction, what happens? Let us say there is a particular company. It gets itself liquidated. Due to some or other reason, X Limited decide that I, we should actually get liquidated and then they re-emerges as a new company by the name of, let us say, New X Limited. So in case of external reconstruction, company gets itself liquidated and re-emerges as a new company. So this is known as external reconstruction. Basic, re basic reason could be that this company might be incurring some losses. So that is why it is liquidating itself and then coming into existence as a new company by the name of New X Limited. From the accounting aspect, it will be known as vendor company and New X Company will be known as purchasing company. You have already seen now that whatever may be the case, whether it is a case of amalgamation, whether it is a case of absorption or whether it is a case of external reconstruction. You have seen that in all these cases, there is either a, there is one, there is a purchasing company and another one is vendor company. Vendor company is also known as acquiry company. Now, if there is a purchasing company and vendor company in all these aspects, that mean accounting under amalgamation of companies will run in two sets of books only. One purchasing company's books and vendor company's book. Vendor company also known as acquiry company. Is it clear to you so far? Now, the next step is how to do the accounting in the books of vendor company. As you know, vendor company is one which is selling its business. When vendor company is selling its business to the other company, indirectly it means the business of vendor company is coming to an end because either it is being taken over or it is getting amalgamated into other company. Directly or indirectly, it means vendor company's business is being now closed. In your earlier phases of education, you have gone through a chapter by the name of partnership. Under partnership, you have gone through a concept by the name of dissolution of company, if you remember. Is it clear to you? Under dissolution, dissolution means partnership business has come to an end permanently. So under dissolution, you have prepared account and you know the accounting. Similar is the situation here. If you remember in your earlier phases of education under dissolution, where a company used to get dissolved, then it used to prepare accounts like realization account, cash account, and of course, owner's account, that is partner's capital account. Similar to here, when a vendor company will get liquidated, it will also prepare realization account, it will also prepare cash account, and it will also prepare owner's account, but owners of a company are shareholders, so it will prepare shareholders account, and besides that, one more account, that is purchasing company account. So when a vendor company will get liquidated, it will prepare four accounts, correct? That is exactly, so we are trying to learn here, books of vendor company, that means how the accounting is done in the books of vendor company or acquiry company. 
some general accounting principles are applied now because the vendor company basically it is closing down so it will prepare one realization account cash account shareholders account and purchasing company account that is what i told you purchasing company account realization account let me rub it out actually mm -hmm. correct <clears throat> And then cash account, as I told you, besides that, it will prepare shareholders account. These four accounts it need to prepare. Now, under the first step, because my business is getting closed, I am presuming myself to be a vendor company. Because the business of my company is closed down. Now, as a first step, what I am going to do, I am going to close my asset side. So your first step in the accounting in the books of vendor company is to close your asset side. In order to close your asset side, what you are going to do? You are going to scan your asset side. Generally, asset side comprises of two things, assets and valueless assets. On the asset side, there are some items which are not basically considered as asset. Those are known as valueless asset. For example, underwriting commission, preliminary expenses, discount on shares and debentures, share selling commission, or for that instance, any suspense account. These items appear to us I appear on the debit side uh, or on the asset side, you may say so, but they are in reality not assets. They are valueless assets. Is it clear to you? Besides that, there will be some, I or in fact, all other items besides valueless items are nothing but assets. As per accounting framework, what we mean by asset? Asset means a resource which is controlled by an enterprise and which is capable of fetching returns for a prolonged period of time. That is what we mean by asset. Now, asset can be segregated into two parts, cash and assets other than cash. Correct? So, after having come across the classification of the asset, now how to actually close the asset side? First of all, take into account all the assets other than cash. All the assets other than cash. All the assets other than, other than cash will be transferred to the debit side of realization account whether those assets are being taken over by new company or not irrespective of that whether these asset land building plant machinery goodwill patent copyright trademarks whatever assets are there stock data except cash whatever assets are there you are going to transfer them to the debit side of realization account important word is whether taking whether being taken over or not irrespective of that so whatever assets are there you are going to transfer them to the debit side of realization account so i'm going to write sundry assets that is assets other than what we call cash i'm going to transfer it to the debit side of realization account number one number two then i'm going to take into account cash what about cash? As far as cash is concerned, two possibilities are there. Either it will be given in the question that cash is being taken over or it would be given cash is not taken over. Accordingly, the accounting treatment will be done. If cash account is taken over, if cash account is taken over, then you are going to write it on the debit side. I'm writing in bracket taken over. If cash will be taken over, you are going to put it towards the debit side of the realization account. Now, suppose if the question states that cash is not taken over, if cash is not taken over, you are simply going to write here by balance brought, sorry, to balance brought down. If cash is not taken over, then you are simply going to put it on the debit side of the cash account. Only regarding cash, you have to exercise caution. Besides cash, whatever assets are there, irrespective of the fact whether those assets have been taken over by the new company or not, you are going to transfer them to the debit side of the realization account. Is it clear to you regarding cash, you have to be careful. If cash is taken over, you are going to put them on the debit side of realization account. If cash is not taken over, you are going to put them on the debit side of cash account in the simply by writing to balance brought down. I'm writing here not taken over, NTO, not taken over. Is it clear to you? Now, besides that, Besides valueless asset, as far as valueless assets are concerned, like underwriting commission, discount, share selling expense, advertisement, suspense account, etc., or any debit balance in profit and loss account, all these are considered combinedly as valueless assets. No entity is going to take your losses because these are valueless assets. That means these assets can never be taken over, valueless assets. So these are losses. And it is the bounded duty of the owners to bear the losses, and shareholders are the owners. So, whatever valueless assets will be there in the question, you will simply put them on the debit side of the shareholders account. Is it clear to you? So, this is how you are going to close your asset side. 
is it clear to you valueless assets will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account regarding cash we have to exercise caution otherwise all assets will be posted to the debit side of realization account irrespective of the fact whether those assets have been taken over or not so this is how we are going to close down our asset side now under the second step closure of liability side first of all we need to be very well aware of what we call liability side i have seen actually many many a times student do not exactly know the classification as far as liability side is concerned it can be divided into three parts as you know capital reserves and liabilities as you know capital and reserves cannot be and cannot be considered as liability first of all we will look into the treatment of liability what we mean by liability in order to understand that first of all you need to know whenever we do accounting it means we are we are basically basically concerning ourselves with three parties whenever we do accounting in accounts correct that mean we are relating ourselves to three parties which are the three parties one the business another one is owners and besides that parties other than business and owners there are three parties one is business second is owners and all other parties besides business and owners like creditors like customers like clients like financial institutions these two are known as internal parties these two are business and organization are considered as internal parties and whatever parties are there besides business and organization are known as third party liability whatever amount is owed to the third party technically is known as liability so more concisely you can say any amount which is owed by business or which is owed by your enterprise correct to parties other than the entity and other than the owner that amount is known as liability i have given a list of what we call liability also like sundry creditors like bills payable outstanding expense bank overdraft unpaid dividend short and long term loans debentures provisions provident fund workmen profit sharing fund workmen saving bank account etc so all these are liability so whatever liabilities are there in the question correct you are going to post them to the credit side of realization account to the credit side of realization account so towards the credit credit side of realization account i am going to write sundry liabilities whatever liabilities are there again whether these liabilities have been taken over by new company or not whether these liabilities have been taken over or not by the purchasing company or acquirer company i am going to post them on the credit side of realization account is it clear to you this is what i have this is what i have written over here transfer all real liability liabilities are also known as real liability because they are liability in real sense whether being taken over or not to the credit side of realization account this is the first step now we are left up with capital and reserves as far as capital and reserves is concerned capital means share capital whatever share capital will be there obviously it cannot be taken over by the new company so share capital will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account and here you are going to write by share capital on the credit side of shareholders account obviously capital will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account now regarding reserves first of all you need to understand that reserves can be divided into three types of into three types one is free reserves another one is statutory reserves then specific reserves accordingly we are going to do the treatment free reserves means free reserves means such reserves which can be used for the purpose of distribution of dividend basically these are free and you can use it for any purpose indirectly it means correct so general reserve profit or loss account credit balance reserve fund security premium capital reserve and free portion free portion of accident fund or sinking fund what we mean by free portion for example in the question it is given on the balance sheet accident fund is 10000 accident fund is 10000 and let us say and let us say in bracket it is written liability liability portion 4000 so it means out of 10000 6000 is free correct and 4000 is liability liability portion will be posted to the credit side of realization account and whatever balance is there free portion the free portion will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account so all the free reserves whatever are there you are going to write it on the credit side of shareholders account correct all the free reserves will be taken to the credit side of shareholders account is it clear to you or not right sir if it is clear then we come across 
as I told you, their reserves are of three types. Besides that, there may be some statutory reserve. What we mean by statutory reserve? Statutory reserves are those reserves which an entity need to create because of some statutory pressure. Statutory pressures, put it in simple words, because of pressure of law. For example, there is an entity which is operating in a special economic zone, correct? Or in a free trade zone. Indirectly means any entity which is operating in a notified zone, it is under pressure, under pressure of law to create such reserves, correct? That means they will have to create such reserves if you, if you are operating in, in a notified zone. Generally under such reserve, we include export profit surplus, also known as foreign project reserve account. And then there is investment allowance reserve. It is also known as development rebate reserve account, a statutory reserve. If there are statutory reserves, again, you will post them to the what we call credit side of shareholders account. So as far as statutory reserves are concerned, all the statutory reserves will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account. Is it clear to you? Besides that, besides that, we may have some specific reserve. Now, a specific reserve is nothing but provision because specifically you are creating them against a particular asset. For example, provision for doubtful debts, investment fluctuation fund, provision for depreciation, stock reserve, replacement reserve. If there are some statutory reserves because they are created against a particular asset and generally all the assets are transferred to the debit side of realization account, that is why all the statutory reserves will be posted to the opposite side of what we call sundry assets. So all the statutory reserves will be posted to the credit side of realization account. So as far as liability side is concerned, all the share capital, all the free reserve and all the statutory reserve will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account and all the liability and statutory reserve will be posted to the what we call credit side of realization account. Is it clear to you? Now you have closed your asset side and liability side. Now, because your company is selling your business to some other entity, quite obviously you are not going to sell your business free of cost. You are going to demand some money that is known as purchase consideration. The purchase consideration in simple words means amount paid by the purchasing unit to the vendor unit against purchase or against taking over your business. Now, in practical life, generally what happens initially agreement takes place between the vendor company and the purchasing company and it, and they decide upon what amount we are going to actually pay you the movement actually a commitment takes place from the purchasing company that we are going to pay you this much of amount on that date vendor company will pass this entry purchasing company account debit to realization account correct that means they are debiting purchasing company because they have to receive this much of amount from the purchasing company and it is a gain to us so that is why realization account is being credited so first of all we will pass the due entry for purchasing company which is purchasing company account debit to realization account so because of this entry i am going to write here on the credit side of realization account by purchasing company i am going to write by purchasing company and obviously because i have passed the entry purchasing company account debit to realization account so on the realization i have written by purchasing company on the debit side of purchasing company now i am going to write here to realization account correct this is the due entry after some time we will receive the amount of purchase consideration when i will receive the amount of purchase consideration because we are receiving purchase comp purchase consideration from the purchasing company now purchasing company might actually issue some cash or they might give us some shares or they might actually issue some debenture so in whatever form actually purchasing company is going to discharge the consideration we will debit that form and then we are going to write to purchasing company correct so various modes of payments through which we are receiving the payment will be debited and purchasing company account will be credited when we are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration. Is it clear to you? We presume for simplicity's sake that purchase consideration is discharged by cash and equity share. Correct? So in the purchasing company account, I will write all these, all these things. Cash account. Let us say some portion of purchase consideration is being received in cash and some portion is being received through shares and let us say some portion is being received through debentures. So the moment we are going to the moment we are going to receive the purchase consideration, this account will get automatically tallied. Now, important thing is that you have received some portion of purchase consideration in cash, let us say, and some portion in shares of purchasing company and some portion through debentures in purchasing company. 
After writing here by cash, I will also write in the cash account to purchasing company the portion of the purchase consideration which is received in cash. I am going to write it on the debit side of the cash account. Besides cash, whatever amount you are receiving, correct, in other form. See, you have received the purchase consideration in three form in this given case, let us say. The portion received in cash will be posted to the cash account and whatever other forms you are receiving, those forms will be will be debited to shareholders account. For example, we have received shares in purchasing company and we have received debentures in purchasing company. So besides cash, whatever form of payment is there, you are going to put them on the debit side of the shareholders account. Is it clear to you or not? So after having done this, now finally the next step is, finally we will look into the question whether there is any liability which hasn't been taken over. Let us say, let us say there are five liabilities. There are five liabilities in the question. I have already told you whatever liabilities were there in the balance sheet, you have already posted it them to the credit side of realization account. Because we have to post the liability on the credit side of realization account irrespective of the fact whether those liabilities have been taken over or not. Now let us say out of these liability, one liability hasn't been taken over, but still we have posted them to the credit side because we have to post all liability, whether those liabilities are being taken over or not. But presuming that one liability in reality hasn't been taken, if there is any liability which hasn't been taken over, then you will going to, then you are going to, that when vendor company is going to pay them off. When vendor company will pay them off, they will write here realization account debit to cash account. That means that liability which hasn't been taken over will have to be paid off by the vendor company. Is it clear to you or not? So this is the entry will pass and on the credit side of cash account, I will cross it. I will write here by realization account. So after purchase consideration due and receipt entry, we have to take into account this point, whether there is any liability which hasn't been taken over. If there is any liability, then you are going to pay off, correct? Finally, it could be a possibility that in the question, it may be given that there are some realization expenses or there might be what we call some acquisition expenses. If those expenses, it is given borne by vendor company then you are going to pass the same entry, realization account debit to cash account. If it is given in the question that expenses have been borne by vendor company, then only you are going to write the expenses here. If a question states that acquisition cost is borne by purchasing company, you are not going to pass any entry. Is it clear to you or not? So this is how the accounting is done in the books of the vendor company. Then you are going to actually close out this particular account. If balancing figure will appear towards this side, it will be considered as profit. Anyway, whatever balancing figure will appear in the realization account. Remember one thing, purchase, purchasing company account is already closed. Now you are going to actually close down your realization account. Now whatever balance is there in the what we call realization account, actually it is a profit. If balance would have appeared towards this side, it would have been considered as loss. But whatever may be the balance, you are going to take it to the shareholders account. Now, presuming that there is a profit, so we have transferred this profit to shareholders account. On the credit side of shareholders account, I am going to write by realization profit. Is it clear to you or not? After having tallied realization account, now the next point is that I need to tally cash account. So in order to tally cash account, what I am going to do? Whatever balance in the cash account will appear. Whatever balance in the cash account will appear. Logically, balance will appear towards this side, but it could appear any side, but generally the balance will appear this side, correct? You will transfer that balance to the shareholders account. It means whatever balance is left in the cash account that is paid off to shareholders account. And then that amount will be posted to the debit side of the shareholders account. And finally, your shareholders account should get automatically tallied. This is how the accounting is done in the books of acquiry company. So after learning all these things, we come directly to the question, correct? before I move further. In question number one, just pay attention. In question number one, you are being given that the following is the balance sheet of stock limited as on 31st of 12, 2026. And on the liability side, you have share capital. So where you are going to post share capital to the credit side of shareholders account, correct? Similarly, let us say there is general reserve and there is profit and loss account in general reserve. There is no security premium. 
so all both these are free reserve general reserve and profit and loss account and including security premium it would have been there all these things would have been taken to the credit side of shareholders account so we will transfer them to the credit side of shareholders account then there is a liability in the form of debentures creditors only two liabilities are there debentures and creditor there is no liability for bills payable in this question so two liability irrespective of the fact whether these liabilities are taken over or not we are going to post them to the credit side of realization account correct now coming over to the asset side on the asset side we have land and building 3 lakh we have plant and machinery 6 lakh 70 both these items will be taken to the debit side to the debit side of realization account correct besides that we have goodwill even goodwill will be posted to the debit side of realization account goodwill is an intangible asset intangible asset are considered as asset correct however preliminary expenses preliminary expense i told you is a valueless item all the valueless item will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account and then stock and debtors you are going to take to the debit side of realization account now regarding bank we have to be careful we have to look into the question whether the bank has been taken over or not if bank has been taken over then i am going to post it to the debit side of what we call realization account and if bank is not taken over then i am simply going to write in the bank account to balance brought down is it clear to you below it is written start limited acquired the business of stop limited except cash at bank and 12% debentures important point is that this time purchasing company is start limited vendor company is stop limited and purchasing company is start limited and purchasing company is not taking over cash not taking over cash and also it is written they are not taking over 12% debentures they are not taking over 12% debentures are you getting my point or not but i have already told you whatever liabilities are there whether being taken over or not you are going to transfer them to the credit side of realization account i have already told you now further it is given for rupees 16 lakh 80000 for rupees 16 lakh 80000 means it is the amount of purchase consideration so purchasing company will pay you 16 lakh 18 80000 so amount of purchase consideration is 16 lakh 80000 Sixteen lakh eighty thousand. Correct. Further, it is written payable as fifteen lakh in the form of one lakh equity shares of ten each at a premium of rupees five per share, and balance in cash. Now, how purchasing company is going to pay rupees sixteen lakh eighty thousand? It is given purchasing company will issue share capital. Purchasing company will issue one lakh shares of rupees ten each, but at the rate of fifteen. so that mean total 15 lakh worth of amount will be discharged by purchasing company by way of shares and balance what is the balance balance in cash so balance amount is 1 lakh 80000 and that will be delivered by way of cash that will be delivered by way of cash this is a scenario which is given in this particular question further it is given further it is given stop limited redeem the debenture at a premium of 10% i just told you a moment ago if a particular liability hasn't been taken over in this case debentures have been not taken over so it is the duty of the vendor company to pay these debenture holders so it is given in the question that debenture holders have been redeemed at 10% premium further in this question it is written acquisition cost amounted to 10000 but it is borne by purchasing company so we are not going to do any treatment in the books of acquiring entity how the treatment will be done in the books of acquirer company that i will let you know later on so you are required to close the books of stop limited correct and pass entries in the books of start limited question has simply stated pass entries in the books of start limited so in the books of vendor company when i will solve this question first of all i will note down what is the amount of purchase consideration actually the amount of purchase consideration is 16 lakh 80000 16 lakh 80000 not 15 lakh correct 16 lakh 80 then i will take into account the mode of payment mode of payment means in what form that payment is being will be delivered by the purchasing company so 16 lakh 80000 is the total consideration i have already told you 1 lakh 80 in cash and for 15 lakh purchasing company will issue 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each at the rate of 50 now how we are going to prepare the ledger accounts i have already told you in the books of vendor company or acquiring company we are going to prepare purchasing company account also known as acquirer company account then realization account 
then we are going to prepare cash account and finally we are going to prepare shareholders account in the question in the balance sheet first of all share capital was given i will post them here there was general reserve and profit and loss account i told you earlier it will be posted to the credit side of what we call shareholders account besides that there were two liabilities debentures and creditors i told you whether liabilities have been taken over or not first of all you are going to put them on the credit side of realization account so this is how you are going to close down your liability side then as far as your assets were concerned there were goodwill land and building plant and machinery stock debtors all these item will be posted to the debit side of realization account on the asset side there was preliminary expense also so preliminary expenses is a valueless item and it will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account besides that besides that in the question regarding cash at bank it was written that cash at bank is not taken over so if it is not taken over then i will write in the cash account balance in the cash or bank account to balance brought down is it clear to you you can write cash at bank account there you are going to write balance brought down 30000 this is how your assets and liability side will get closed down then you will think of the purchase consideration first of all the amount of purchase consideration you are going to write here by acquirer company correct on the credit side of realization account in bracket i have written purchase consideration due and then i will cross it to the debit side of acquirer company account so due entry is passed now we will receive the amount of purchase consideration as we saw and we just a moment ago that we are receiving some portion in cash 180 and some portion by way of shares i will write shares in acquirer company 15 lakh now whatever portion I, and at this account will get closed now the moment i am going to receive the amount of purchase consideration this account will get closed now whatever cash which we have received will be posted to the debit side so i have posted it to the debit side and besides cash whatever form of payment will be there i just told you that will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account so on the debit side of shareholders account we have written shares in acquirer company account is it clear to you after this now we will check whether there is any liability which hasn't been taken over yes there is one liability debenture which hasn't been taken over now the question states that that liability has been paid off at 10% premium so that is the reason first of all i am going to write here to cash an amount of debenture is 150 but i will have to pay them off at 10% premium total 165 so i have written here to cash on the credit side of cash account i will write by realization 165 correct then we will have to check cost of acquisition however the expenses are there but not borne by vendor company so we will stop here now we will tally this account now in this case there is a profit of 155000 i will transfer this profit to shareholders account so on the credit side of shareholder account i will write by realization profit then i will close my cash account whatever balance is there which is 45000 that balance will be transferred to shareholders account now on the debit side of shareholders account i will cross it and finally my shareholder account will automatically get tallied is it clear to you because in this question it is simply stated that we have to pass entries in the books of acquirer entity so should i apply as 14 or should i apply in as 103 i will have to apply in as 103 because nothing is mentioned that pass entries presuming it to be a case of amalgamation so that is how you need to be little bit alert is it clear to you so under business combination under in as 103 first of all we will take into account whatever assets we are getting just ignore this word goodwill on business combination first of all you look into the assets which you are taking over you are taking over goodwill you are taking over land and building plant and machinery stock debtors this is exactly what we write the entry and then we are taking over liability also and we are taking and we have to pay 16 lakh 80 16 lakh 80000 worth of consideration so this is the entry for asset taken over and liability the difference is coming over to here so i will write here goodwill account you can also write goodwill on business combination correct then you will pay off the consideration consideration account debit you will write here to cash <clears throat> 1 lakh 80 now you will write here to equity share capital but write here because now you are the issuing or issuing company so you will have to mention the face value 1 lakh share of 10 each and you will mention the security premium separately now if there will be some acquisition cost correct 
and that cost is borne by purchasing company. You remember under business combination, I talked about this fact that acquisition expenses borne by acquirer company will be expensed, will be treated as revenue nature expenses. So that is why entry will be acquisition related expense account. Ultimately, these expenses will be debited to profit and loss account. That is why I have also written profit and loss in bracket. And then you will write here to bank. This is how the entry will be done in the books of acquirer entity. Is it clear to you or not? Now, in this question, actually, you have noticed that purchase consideration was given. But sometime and often in the examination, amount of purchase, com amount of purchase com uh, consideration need to be found out. Correct? In the last question, it was clearly given that purchasing company will deliver 16,80,000 for taking over your business. But sometime this amount of purchase consideration will not be available. So if purchase consideration is not available, in that case, purchase consideration can be computed either through net assets approach or through intrinsic value of shares approach or through net payment approach. Is it clear to you? That means purchase consideration can be found out if it is not given in the question, either through net assets approach or intrinsic value of shares approach or net payment through net payment method approach. So first of all, I will try to make you understand <coughs> the net assets approach. Correct? Under net assets approach, how we are going to actually compute the purchase consideration, it is not a tough task. Just have a look over here. In this particular question, it is being given that balance sheet of top limited decided to sell its business to bottom limited. So bottom limited is the purchasing company, acquirer company and top limited is the vendor company or acquiry company. So balance sheet of top limited is given to you. In the balance sheet, the first item is share capital where you are going to take it share, uh, take this item to. You are going to post it to the credit side of the shareholders account. Besides that, we have reserves. Reserves will also find place on the credit side of shareholders account. Then we have two liabilities, debentures and creditors. I have already told you, irrespective of the fact, whether liabilities are taken over or not, you are going to post them on the credit side of realization account. Then we have property, plant and machinery and goodwill. All these items will be debited to the realization account. Even stock will be debited. Regarding cash, I will have to check whether it is given in the question it is taken over or not. And suppose if it is not given at all, whether it is being taken over or not. In that particular case, always presume that cash has been taken over. Now question says below, bottom limited took over all assets and liability except cash. In this question, it is clearly given that bottom limited is taking over all your assets and liability except cash at their book values. First of all, the question says that all the assets and liabilities have been taken over except cash. So now we come to know that cash is not taken over. So cash will be posted to the debit side of cash account. Is it clear to you? Further, it is given. First, the question says all your assets have been taken over. All your liabilities have been taken over, but cash is not taken over. Now question says, however, goodwill was taken over at 1 lakh. That means some revised value of goodwill is given and property is taken over at 1 lakh 80. Actually, company is taking over all the assets, no doubt, but goodwill now it is stated has been taken over at 1 lakh and property at 1 lakh 80. Now it is given in the question bottom limited agree to pay 90,000 in cash. Now in this question, it is stated that purchasing company bottom limited will pay some portion in cash that is 90,000. Bottom limited agree to pay 90,000 in cash and balance in the form of equity share and balance in the form of equity share balance in the form of equity share. Problem is that how I am going to compute the amount of balance because purchase consideration is not given in this question. Unless purchase consideration is given, I total purchase consideration amount I won't have. I won't be able to find out the amount received by way of equity shares. So in this question, amount of purchase consideration is not given, but it is given that some portion is received in cash and some portion or the balance portion in shares word balance is written and amount of purchase consideration is not given if amount of purchase consideration is not given 
and question states that balance portion in so and so for instance in this case it is written balance portion by way of equity shares so if purchase consideration is not given and question states balance portion in so and so in under such cases you will have to apply net assets method to compute the amount of purchase consideration how to apply net assets method it is very simple in order to compute the purchase consideration under net assets method first of all in my working note i am going to take into account which assets we are taking over in fact we are taking over all the asset but we are taking over goodwill at 1 lakh property at 1 lakh 80000 however plant and machinery is being taken over at book value and stock is being taken over at same value so 8 lakh 40000 now I will subtract the liabilities which we have taken over. There are two liabilities. Correct? In this question, company is taking over all the assets and all the liability. So in order to compute purchase consideration through net assets method, you will simply take into account asset taken over and you will subtract the amount of liabilities taken over. The difference will tell you 5,90,000. This, the difference will be your purchase consideration. Now you have figured out that your purchase consideration actually is 5,90,000. So that means out of 5,90,000, we are receiving 90,000 by way of cash. So 5 lakh, we must be receiving by way of equity shares. Is it clear to you or not? Now, rest of the question will run on similar lines. For example, I have already told you in this particular question, First of all, there was a share capital we, which we have posted to the credit side of shareholders account. Then there were reserves which we posted to the what we call credit side of shareholders account. Then there were two liabilities in the question. Deventures and creditors, both these liabilities will be posted to the credit side of realization. Correct? Now, coming over to the asset side, first of all, all the assets, when you are going to Prepare the realization account. Remember one thing, you are doing the posting from the balance sheet. So here only book values will come. Is it clear? Or the balance sheet value will figure. So whatever goodwill is appearing in the balance sheet, you are going to post here. Similarly, property, plant and machinery, stock. Now, in this question, cash was there, but cash was not being taken over. So you are going to write cash here. Don't write. This is unnecessarily written here. Cut it out. Actually, in this question, cash hasn't been taken over. So you are going to write in the cash account to balance brought down. Is it clear to you? So our asset side and liability side is closed down. Now, we will pass the entries for purchase for purchase consideration. For that, first of all, I need to write on the credit side of realization account by acquirer company. You can write in bracket purchase consideration. Then you will cross it to the debit side of acquirer company. You will write here to realization. This is for due entry. Now you will receive the amount of consideration. You will write here by cash and then you will write here by shares in acquirer company that is 5 lakh. Once you will receive the payment, this account will automatically get closed. Now cash will be posted to the debit side of the cash account and shares will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account. <clears throat> Whatever other form of payments are there besides cash, you are going to put them on the debit side of the shareholders account. Is it clear to you or not? So now your this part is also over after that we generally look into the fact whether there is any liability which hasn't been taken over in this particular question there is not a single liability which hasn't been taken over all the liabilities have been taken over is it clear to you now in this question there is a line written expenses of liquidation amounted to 15,000 but this time it is not written which company is bearing these expenses so if it is not written which company is bearing the cost of acquisition or cost of dissolution also known as cost of liquidation then always presume these expenses have been borne by vendor companies so we shall presume in this case that vendor company is bearing the expenses so we will write here two cash expenses 15,000 and then I will cross these expenses to the credit side of realization account. Now I will tell you my realization account profit will be 15,000. This profit will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account. After that, we are going to tally out cash account. And then whatever balance is there, 145, it will be posted here. Is it clear to you? And ultimately your shareholders account will get closed. Again, in this particular question, it is written pass entries also in the books of bottom limited it is not written that pass entries in the books of bottom limited presuming it to be a case of amalgamation so india's 103 will apply 
So, under India is ended in three, we write all the assets which we have taken over. Correct? And generally, at which value which we have taken over? Actually, we have taken over all the asset, but we have taken over goodwill at 1 lakh. We have taken over property 180. We have taken over plant 2 lakh. We have taken over this. So, 8 lakh 40. So, in the entry, I have written directly or you can write separately also. I have written here identifiable asset taken over 8 lakh 40. You can write this way around or you can write separately. Then, two liabilities you have taken over. Their total is 250. And then I will write to consideration 5,90,000. And then I will make the payment payment entry, consideration 590, two cash and two equity share capital account. Is it clear to you? Importantly, from examination point of view, generally what we have seen questions are striking from this particular topic, intrinsic value of shares. Now, what we mean by intrinsic value of share? Actually, intrinsic value of share is a very practical concept. Very practical concept. In practical life, when a particular company, let us say A company, is taking over the business of company B. Company A is taking over the business of company B. Now, the problem is that, let us say, there are 1 lakh share holders of company B. There are 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each. So, when A company will take over company B, does it mean that in order to pay the consideration, purchasing company will issue 1 lakh shares? because they have got 1 lakh shares. So, should we issue 1 lakh shares? So, this is the point. Actually, in practical life, how it is decided that acquirer company will issue how many number of shares to each shareholder of the vendor company? Because when we take over the business of the other entity, it means we have to issue some shares to the shareholders of the vendor company. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear to you? And how it is decided in practical life? It is decided through intrinsic value of share methodology. And I will give you a little bit of idea regarding this. Let us say there is Mr. B and there is Mr. A. Mr. A tells Mr. B, kindly give me rupees 500. So Mr. B actually what he does, he looks into his pocket, he finds that there is one 5 rupee note. There is only one note, number of note is one, but its value is rupees 500. So B plucks out rupees 500 note, only one note, and he delivers this note to Mr. A. Are you getting my point? How many number of notes have been delivered by B to Mr. A? One. What is the value of that note? 500. So what is the worth of money given by entity B to A? That is 500. Now suppose Mr. Sorry, I told entity Mr. B. What is the value? That is 500. Now Mr. A, what he does, let us say next day, Mr. A pulls out one note. One note. Only one note. Number of note is one. However, its value is only rupees 10. Its value is rupees 10. And he tells to Mr. B, yesterday I took one note from you. So I am giving one note back to you. Now, Mr. B becomes very angry. What the hell you are talking about? I gave you 500 rupees and you are giving me only 10 rupees in return. Mr. A is telling, see here, you gave me only one note and I am giving you one note. So, equation is fine. And Mr. B, before he plucks out his mind, correct? Mr. A tells, don't worry, don't worry. I am simply joking. Actually, I will give you 10 more notes. In fact, I will give you how much? Uh, not actually, 5 notes. Instead of 1, I will give you 5 notes now. Is it clear to you? Uh, in fact, I will give you 50 notes. Instead of 1 note, I will give you 50 notes, but denomination of these notes is 10. So now you should be happy. I was simply joking. But you got my point or not? Actually, against 1 note, Entity A is delivering now 50 notes. Why? Because the denomination is different. Denomination is different. That is exactly what is the situation in practical life. In order to settle how many shares we should issue to you, correct? Intrinsic value per share of both the companies will be found out and accordingly it will be decided how many shares acquirer company will issue to the acquiry company. So intrinsic value of share is very important from practical point of view in our regular courses. I do actually lots of discussion regarding that but time permitting still I have tried my level best effort to make you understand correct 
because I told you we are simply not going to take revision just for the sake of taking the revision. We want you to be benefited. So in order to understand the replications of intrinsic value of shares methodology, just pay attention. This is the first question wherein we are being given balance sheet of both the companies because whatever question which we have done so far actually in those questions we came across only the balance sheets of the acquiry company actually this is the balance sheet of k limited and j limited as you can see and later on we will see k limited is taking over j limited is it clear to you further in this particular question i have already told you this is the vendor company and this is the acquirer entity that is purchasing company correct in the balance sheet, we find that there is equity, share capital, general reserve and profit and loss account. Is it clear to you? As far as vendor company is concerned, vendor company is having only two liabilities. That is creditors and bills payable. Whereas K limited is having three liabilities, debentures, creditors and bills payable. Is it clear? And coming over to the asset side, Coming over to the asset side, what we find there are fixed assets of vendor company, but there is no investment and current asset. However, purchasing company is having fixed asset, investment and current asset. Very small balance sheet is given to you just to explain the concept. Here it is written board of directors of K Limited approved to take over J Limited on the aforementioned date. So on this date directors of K Limited decided to take over J Limited. If the question would state only this much, always presume all the assets and liabilities have been taken over. All the assets and liabilities have been taken over. Always presume this way if nothing is mentioned. Further it is written, find out the ratio of exchange of share on the basis of book value. Whenever the question will state, find out the ratio of exchange it always means you will have to apply intrinsic value of share method. So when and how to, actually when to apply intrinsic value of share method is not an headache. The reason being is very simple because it is it would be clearly mentioned directly or indirectly in the question that you have to adopt intrinsic value of share method to find out the purchase consideration because if the question would state find out the ratio of exchange correct or question may state purchase consideration will be discharged through ratio of exchange or on the basis of intrinsic value of share or on the basis of book value of shares always presume that we have to apply intrinsic value of share method now first of all we need to learn how the intrinsic value of share is computed in order to compute the intrinsic value of share first of all what we need to do first of all we will note down the items of both the companies correct items of both the companies remember one thing in this question no revised values are given if any revised value would have been there i would have taken them also correct so at this moment there are no revised value first of all i will take into account all the assets and the total of the assets of purchasing company is 18 lakh then i will take into account three liabilities of the purchasing company so by subtracting these liabilities from the total of 18 lakh we get 12 lakh now you tell me when you are going to subtract liability from assets this balancing figure can be termed as net assets or it can be termed as capital employed what does net assets or capital employed signifies it signifies assets available for shareholders it signifies that this much assets are available for the shareholders that mean after meeting all the liability if there will be surplus assets 12 lakh is nothing but surplus assets. So it means these are the assets available for shareholders. In this question, there is no preference share capital is given. If preference share capital would have been given, I would have subtracted them. Then I would have arrived at assets available for equity share. That means in order to determine intrinsic value of share, you need to find out assets available for shareholders. For that, what you are, what you need to do? You need to first of all collaborate all the assets. If revised values are given, consider the revised value. Add revised value in case if there is revised value. Then subtract the liability. Find out the assets available for shareholders. Then subtract preference share capital if it is given in the balance sheet. Then you will be left up with assets available for shareholders. Now, if I am going to divide these assets by the total number of shares not if we will look into the question total share capital 
total share capital where is the share question total share capital of k limited is 4 lakh and one share is of 10 each so number of share is 40000 so i will divide it by number of share i will get intrinsic value that is known as intrinsic value and what does intrinsic value of share signifies intrinsic value of share signifies that see here one share of purchasing company is of 10 10 face value is 10 but intrinsic value is 30 it means in case today if this company gets liquidated shareholders need not require to worry because in order to back up one share of 10 company has 30 worth of assets so through intrinsic value of shares real worthiness of the company can be determined actually in practical life before investing into the company generally the potential shareholders or experts they try to find out the intrinsic value of shares it is known as intrinsic value intrinsic means inside because generally this value is not published correct uh, in the financial statement that is why it is known as intrinsic value so intrinsic value of this entity is 30 so on similar logic, I'm going to find out the intrinsic value now of acquiry company, their property plant and no investment current asset, total assets, five lakh. Then I will subtract two liabilities, debentures and uh, creditors, sorry, creditors and bills payable. So net assets will be three lakh sixty and there is no preference share capital. That means assets available for equity shares is equal to three lakh sixty and their number of share is equal to eighteen thousand. So intrinsic value of this company is 20. Also, the position of this company is quite strong because if the intrinsic value is equal to face value or more than that, generally it is considered, generally it is considered that the financial strength of this company is better and strong, correct? So position as far as is concerned of both the companies is absolutely strong. Now we come over to the purchase consideration, how to compute the purchase, purchase consideration. Actually, when we will look very carefully, we find that intrinsic value of share methodology is nothing but extension of net assets method. Because after subtracting, after subtracting liability from assets, we have already determined the amount of purchase consideration. This 360,000 is nothing but amount of purchase consideration that is net assets of what we call purchasing company correct so that is why i have written here purchase consideration that is net assets of acquiry company j limited is three lakh sixty thousand now the next question is now how many number of share purchasing company will issue to make the payment of three lakh how many number of share we are going to issue so for that I have written here number of share to be issued by purchasing company on the basis of intrinsic value of share. That means now we are going to make the payment and decide about the number of shares on the basis of on the basis of what we call intrinsic value of shares. On the basis of intrinsic value of shares, correct? So first of all, in order to know how many number of share acquirer company will issue, I will take into account purchase consideration and I will divide it by intrinsic value of my company. Amount of purchase consideration is 360000 and intrinsic value of share of acquirer entity is 30. So that means now we will we have decided or now we have determined that we are going to make uh, we are going to issue 12,000 shares to discharge 360,000 worth of purchase consideration. You can look here. Thus, purchasing company shall issue 12,000 shares of 10 each at the rate of 30 per share. Correct. So, in order to discharge purchase consideration of 360,000, purchasing company will issue 12,000 shares of 10 each at the rate of 30. Under intrinsic value of shares, purchase consideration is discharged only by way of shares. Correct. Number one. Number two. In this question, it was also asked, compute the ratio of exchange. How to compute the ratio of exchange? You must have noticed that vendor company in total is having 18,000 shares. Their number of share is 18,000, vendor company. However, purchasing company has decided that we are going to issue you only 12,000 shares. We have just seen, correct? That means in order to determine the ratio of exchange, first of all, note down the total number of shares of vendor company. Then whatever number of shares your company has determined, correct, which you are going to actually discharge, uh, use to discharge the purchase consider consideration that is 12,000. 
इट मीन्स सी एक्चुअल टू होम द परचेज कंसिडरेशन इज गिवन परचेज कंसिडरेशन इज ऑलवेज गिवन टू द ओनर्स एंड हु आर द ओनर्स ओनर्स आर द शेयर होल्डर्स सो इट मीन्स योर कंपनी विल इश्यू ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड शेयर ओनली टू द एटीन थाउजेंड शेयर होल्डर्स ऑफ एंडर कंपनी सो इफ आई विल कंप्यूट द रेशियो डेट कम्स टू टू इज टू थ्री ओनली डेट मीन फॉर एवरी थ्री शेयर वी आर गोइंग टू इश्यू ओनली टू शेयर for every three shares we are going to issue only two shares but if we will look carefully we are not doing any injustice see here intrinsic value of vendor company we just computed was 20 that means the worth of three share as per intrinsic value is equal to 60 and we are issuing two shares but the intrinsic value of our share is 30 so against 60 we are making a payment of 60 but we are issuing lesser number of shares simply because the denomination of our share is higher in comparison to their share and here denomination means intrinsic value of share is it clear to you or not so this is the point which you need to understand so how intrinsic value of share is determined that is important and through intrinsic value of share it is decided how many number of share purchasing company will issue to the what we call vendor company to discharge the purchase consideration now in the books of acquire in the books of acquiring company in the books of acquiring company correct just to make the things little bit more clear i have already told you first of all we are going to prepare four accounts acquirer company account realization account cash account but intentionally i haven't prepared cash account in this particular question because i don't think it will be needed how i came to that conclusion i will let you know in a short while but first of all when we'll prepare this account first of all what i am going to do i am going to close my liability side on the liability side there is share capital of the vendor company i will write it to the towards the credit side of shareholders account obviously the reserves will also find place here then there were two liabilities of vendor company creditors and bills payable which will be posted to the credit side of realization account and on the liability side there is nothing more there was pnl also and pnl will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account this is how you are going to close your liability side on the asset side there are two assets property plant and equipment and current asset in this question there is no cash balance so i refrained myself from preparing cash account correct <coughs> on the asset side there are only two assets so asset side is also closed now i am going to write here by acquirer company correct purchase consideration due i will cross this item here and then i will receive the payment this time entire payment will be received by way of shares so we are going to write on the credit side shares in acquirer company account 3 lakh 60000 now this amount will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account and now you can see shareholders account is already getting tallied now entries in the books of acquirer company now in the books of acquirer company because nothing nothing is mentioned in the question that how we have to pass entry in the books of acquirer company then you will have to adopt india standard entry you will have to adopt india uh, sorry existing standard as 14 if the question would clearly specify pass entries in the books of acquirer company presuming it to be a case of amalgamation is it clear to you so that is why i am applying india standard in 3 so all the asset taken over there are only two assets and then uh, uh, there are two assets 3 lakh and this and two liabilities which we have taken over then i am going to write two consideration correct and then i will make the entry for payment of purchase consideration consideration account debit to equity share capital to security premium how we arrived over security premium because we are issuing 12000 shares of rupees 10 each at the rate of 30 so 12000 into 10 120 and 12000 into 20 will be equal to 2 lakh 40000 is it clear to you or not so this is how we have to do the question now we will come across 6. this question this is not 6.2 you just click numbering is 3.1 it is actually 3.2 where i have written 6.2 make it 3.2 now this question we have adopted from the past examination paper so before we attempt this particular question we'll take 5 minutes of break and then we will continue
welcome again so after having completed till up to 3.1 now we are moving over to 3.2 just pay attention towards this particular question here it is written f1 limited agree to take over f2 limited on 110 2026 in the balance sheet of both these companies on 31st of 3 2026 kindly correct it is given to you so balance sheet is given on 31st of 3 2026 this is the date of balance sheet however f1 is taking over f2 correct and it is taking over f2 almost after six months from the end of the current year from the end of the balance sheet date correct almost after six months the business is being taken over now in this case it is given to you that equity share capital of f1 and f2 and then we are being given situation of reserves 390,000 profit and loss account 330 for acquirer entity for acquiring entity this much there is only one liability creditors correct total is given then we are being given fixed assets and then we are being given current assets uh, stock and then we have daters then we have bank balance and then we have preliminary expenses correct preliminary expenses now question states that question states that for the six months period from 1st april 2026 for the six months i told you from the end of the current year from the end of the current year the current year is ending on 31st of 3 2026 now the current accounting year will start on 1 4 2026 now from 1 4 2026 till the date of acquisition <clears throat> correct it is given that f1 limited and f2 limited made a profit of 5 lakh 40 thousand and 3 lakh 60 thousand respectively after writing of depreciation at the rate of 10 percent per annum on their fixed asset after writing of depreciation that means first of all in your rough work you need to compute depreciation for six months on fixed assets correct you need to compute that first of all and they have made a profit of 5 lakh 40 thousand and 3 lakh 60 thousand see here the first thing what i have written here increase in profit during these th during these six months both the companies made profits of 540 and 3 lakh 60 thousand as i told you i will compute the depreciation on respective assets for six months so into 10 percent into 6 by 12. so depreciation is 77,563,000. Hundred, i have to add back this as you know you have done your cash flow statement so many times depreciation is a non-cash item so in order to know actually our cash profit correct how much profit which we earn because this profit is given after depreciation so i need to add back depreciation to find out my actual profit so that been during the six months both these entities earned a profit of six lakh seventeen thousand five hundred and four lakh twenty three thousand five hundred number one further it is given both the companies paid on 1st of August 2026 equity dividend of 10%. Actually, nowadays it is not there, but it is given dividend tax at 15% was paid by each of them on such payment. As you know, dividend is always paid on the share capital. So whatever their share capital is there, first of all, you are going to compute 10% of that to know the amount of dividend. Once you have computed the amount of dividend, now you will apply 15% of the amount of dividend to know the dividend dividend tax. Correct? Suppose dividend amount is 2 lakh. I will compute 15% of 2 lakh to know the amount of dividend tax. What will be the treatment and where we are going to use it? I will let you know in a short while. Further, it is given goodwill of F2 limited. Goodwill of F2 limited was valued at rupees 1,68,900 on the date of takeover. So on the date of takeover, vendor company or acquiry company's goodwill was valued at 1,68,900. And a stock of F2 Limited, a stock of F2 Limited was subject to an abnormal item of 8,500 to be written off. What does it mean? Now, if you are going to take into account the stock of F2 Limited, it is 2,31,000. But question says that it includes an abnormal item of 8,500. First, I am going to subtract 8,500. So, 231,000. If I am going to subtract 8,500, mm -hmm, 231,000 minus 8,500. That is equal to 222,500. 
क्वेश्चन स्टेट दैट स्टॉक ऑफ एफ टू लिमिटेड इज सब्जेक्ट टू एन एबनॉर्मल आइटम ऑफ एट थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड टू बी रिटर्न ऑफ सो वी हैव रिटर्न ऑफ स्टॉक फॉर एट थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड वुड बी एप्रिशिएटेड बाई ट्वेंटी परसेंट फॉर दी पर्पज ऑफ टेक ओवर वट डज इट मीन दैट मीन वट एवर बैलेंस ऑफ स्टॉक इज देयर दैट विल बी एप्रिशिएटेड बाई ट्वेंटी परसेंट इफ आई एम गोइंग टू टेक ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ दिस इट इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड so that mean stock of f2 limited is taken over at this value let me add it 222500 plus this that comes to 267000 so that mean stock of f2 limited has been taken over at 267000 is it clear to you or not so further now it is given f2 limited would issue to f2 limited shareholders fully paid equity shares of 10 each on the basis of comparative intrinsic value of shares on the date of turnover on the date of takeover so that mean purchase consideration will be will be paid off or discharged of course by way of share but how many number of share purchasing company will have to deliver to acquirer entity that will be decided through intrinsic value three demands of the question are there one calculate the consideration correct number 1 calculate the number of share to be issued by f1 to f2 and ascertain the closing balance which will appear in the balance sheet of f1 limited after the absorption so this is the demand of this particular question in this question they haven't asked anything in the books of acquiry come to be very honest with you question will hardly ever ask to do any accounting in the books of acquiry under rarest of rare chances if it asks how accounting is done i have already told you now in this question two three points are important because the date of acquisition is after the end of 6 months from the beginning of the current year the current year is beginning on 14 2026 i have already told you and on 1st of october 2026 business is being taken over f1 limited is taken over f2 limited that been on this date i need to know the exact position of assets and liability exact position of assets and liability is it clear to you in order to compute the intrinsic value of share on this date problem is that some transaction have taken place from this particular date to this particular date so i will have to incorporate those transactions as i told you because those transaction could affect some items of your balance sheet which are appearing on this particular date for example in this question whatever cash balance is there that will also get affected why it will get affected i will let you know first of all net profit is 54360 we added back depreciation to know the cash profit number 1 number 2 see your opening balance as per the balance sheet is 180 that means this is the you know, balance as per the balance sheet now we have just concluded that profit has increased by 6,17,500. Remember one thing, in accounts, increase in profit means increase in cash. Increase in profit means increase in cash. So that is why I am going to add it to cash balance. So now my total cash available is 9,57,500 and 6,03,000 for F2 limited. But in this question, it is also stated that both these companies have paid dividend. Dividend will have no effect with respect to time period because dividend is always paid at a fixed rate 10% 15% 20% in this case both the companies have paid dividend at the rate of 20% so first of all total share capital of f1 limited is 20% and at the rate of 10% payment of dividend will be 2 lakh similarly regarding this company 15 lakh is the share capital 10% is the rate of dividend 1 lakh 50000 that mean your cash will get reduced because of payment of dividend further question has stated that company has paid dividend along with dividend tax and dividend tax will be computed on the basis of payment of dividend so 15% of 2 lakh is 30000 so that mean 30000 dividend tax is also paid similarly 15% of 1 lakh 50000 will be 22500 so now you come to the conclusion on the date of turn on the date of take uh, take over or acquisition the position of the cash is actually this much that mean in order to determine what we call intrinsic value of share now i will consider cash at this value correct now we can find out the intrinsic value of the share first of all and good it is decided also in the question it is written that on the date of acquisition goodwill of f2 limited was determined at 168900 you will consider this value also all the assets which are being taken over 
then property, plant and equipment or fixed asset. Whatever book value is given in the balance sheet, you subtract the amount of depreciation for six months, which we have already computed. Now you will get these values. That means on the date of acquisition, these are the value of the fixed asset. Then debtors will appear at same value because there is no change. A stock of F1 Limited will appear at same value. But a stock of this company, a stock of this company, you will compute at this value. Is it clear to you? As I told you, stock of this company, what was the amount of stock actually? Earlier I made some calculations. Oh, actually I made the comp computation with respect to debtors. I am extremely sorry. Sorry, extremely. I will show you how it is how we have arrived over this particular figure. First of all, I am going to subtract 8,500 from the stock value. Stock value is 3,81,000. So from 3,81,000, 3,81,000, I am going to subtract 8,500. Really sorry. So now the value is 3,72,500. And this will be appreciated by 20%. So I will compute now 20% into 20%. That is equal to 74,500. And now I will add this 372,500. So that comes to 447,000. So stock of F2 Limited has been taken over at this value. Is it clear to you or not? So stock has been taken over at this particular value. So that is how 447,600 is given. Actually, it is coming 447,600. So it seems this figure is, there is some, uh, let me check out what is the exact amount. I think it is 4,47,000. You write here 4,47,000 only. Correct? You write here 4,47,600. It is not 600, it is 4,47,000. Now, cash, the f amount of cash which you just computed 7,27,500 and 4,30,500. So this is the position of the total assets on the date of acquisition. From there on I am going to subtract only one liability creditors. Then I will come across value of net assets. Because in this question value of net asset it is also known as assets available for shareholders. In this question, there is no preference share capital. So this item with nothing but assets available for shareholders. Now I will divide it by number of equity shares. So we will get intrinsic value of share. Now, coincidentally, we find actually that intrinsic value of share of both the companies is similar. 15-15, isn't it or not? Now, question has also asked how many number of share we are going to discharge. Uh, how many number of shares purchasing company will issue? So 24 lakh is the amount of purchase consideration. How? This 24 lakh figure. Difference between asset and liability is purchase consideration. Now you divide it by intrinsic value of your own share. Of purchasing company intrinsic value of share is 15. So 1 lakh 60,000 shares will be issued. Is it clear to you or not? Correct? And what is the amount of bank balance I have already told you? Amount of bank balances we have already computed in the question. So three demands were there. So all these three demands have been met well and truly. Correct? So this is how we have to do this particular question. Intrinsic value of share questions are very important from the examination point of view. Now there is another method of computing net payment method of computing purchase consideration. How we compute purchase consideration through net payment method? First of all, you need to understand when you are not in a position to, first of all, purchase consideration is not given. Obviously, you will think of computing purchase consideration through net assets method, but net, at net assets method can be applied only when question will tell you that some portion you are receiving, some portion you are receiving in a particular form and balance portion in a particular form. For example, some portion in cash and balance by way of equity share or some portion in equity share or balance in cash. If it is written this way around, then we have to apply net assets method. Regarding intrinsic value of share method, we need not require to apply or stretch or what we call veins of mind. The reason is very simple because it is clearly stated that we have to find out intrinsic value. Now, when in the question purchase consideration is not given, and neither net assets method can be applied, 
nor intrinsic value of share method can be applied. So we are left off with only one methodology of computing purchase consideration that is net payment method. Under net payment method, what we are supposed to do and how we have to compute purchase consideration. This is a little bit tricky, but not very tricky. Let's have a look over here. This is the balance sheet of company on 31st of 3, 2026. Obviously, because I have to explain the concept, I have kept only three items towards the asset side, property, plant and equipment or fixed asset, current asset and cash. Total happens to be 14 lakh. Now coming over to the liability side, in this question, I have written equity share capital. And besides that, this is the first question wherein we are coming across preference shareholders. And in bold, I have written three liabilities, 10% debentures, creditors and staff provident fund. Anything which is due to employees or staff is a liability and it is not a free reserve. And there is a free reserve in the question in the form of reserve fund. Correct. This is the balance sheet of late limit. This is the balance sheet of early limited. Now, here it is written, ironically, late limited. Late limited is taking over early limited and it is taking over all assets, but cash is not being taken over. So all the assets are being taken over, cash is not taken over. And all liabilities. There are three liabilities in the question which we have already seen. There are three liabilities in the question. One is debentures, another one is creditors, and another one is staff provident fund. Actually, it is given in the question that purchasing company is taking over only, only creditors and this one, but debentures are not being taken over because it is mentioned in the question all liabilities except debentures of early limited, except debentures of early limited. It is given in the question. Now further the question states that as per the terms of the agreement, as per the terms of the agreement, acquirer company shall discharge the amount of purchase consideration through. Now as per the direction of the question it is given that acquirer company will discharge the amount of purchase consideration through issue of 15 equity shares for each equity shareholder of acquiring company. That means here it is written purchasing company will issue at least you can understand that purchasing company will issue equity shares to equity shareholders of acquiring company. This line suggests this. Further, it is written, purchasing company will issue 30 equity share at 20% premium for every four preference shareholders of acquiry company. It means this payment is being given to preference shareholders of acquiry company, but payment is being given by way of equity share. This is the form of payment. And this is party of party of acquiry company to whom the payment is being given. So equity shareholder are being given equity shares, preference shareholders will be delivered equity shares. Further, it is given in the question issue of such an amount of 15% debentures so that 10% debentures of acquiry company could be paid off at 20% premium. And now it is written that some payment is being given to the debenture holders and for them purchasing company is issuing debentures only. Issue of such an amount of debenture. So, you must have noticed that in this question, it is not given that purchasing company is giving some portion of the payment in this manner and balance in some manner. That means net assets method cannot be utilized. Intr regarding intrinsic value of share, nothing is mentioned. So we have to apply net payment method. And whenever, when the question is of net payment method, the language is entirely different and you can easily figure it out that you have to apply net assets method because under net payment method, sorry, under net payment method, it will be given to you that purchasing company is making some payment to different parties of acquiry company. So under it, actually purchasing company will agree will make an agreement with the what we call acquiry company that we will pay to various parties of your company some portion of payment. Is it clear to you? But what you need to understand, one important aspect, but before I come over to that particular aspect, now I will tell you first of all how to interpret all these things. First of all, through first line, I have noticed that payment is being received by the equity shareholder. So first of all, I will write the name of the party equity shareholders of acquiry company. 
then I will note down the total number of equity share and their face value or and their worth. So we have noted that there are 5000 shares of 100 each. Correct number one. Now there are 5000 equity shares of vendor company. Now as per the direction of the question, purchasing company will issue 15 shares. So I will multiply it with 15. 15 shares of 10 each at par for each equity shareholder of acquiring company for each equity share that means for one share purchasing company is issuing 15 shares correct that means in total purchasing company will issue 75,000 share because for each shareholder purchasing company is issuing 15 equity share and these shares are being issued at the rate of rupees 10 each so total amount will become equal to 750000 so i will write here see i have written here so 75000 share 5000 divided by 1 into 15 that mean we are offering 75000 share and these shares are being issued at the rate at par that mean at the rate of 10 total amount 750 and you have to notice very carefully in what form payment is being delivered the payment is being delivered by way of equity shares number one number two there are 11 percent preference share 4000 shares of 100 each of acquiry company now in the next line it is written issue of 30 equity share of 10 each at 20 percent premium so 20 percent of 10 will be two that means one share of 10 will be issued at the rate of 12. So 30 equity share will be given by purchasing company at the rate of 12 for every four preference shareholders for every four preference shareholders. So that means there are 5000 preference share sorry 4000 preference shares correct and purchasing company is issuing 30 equity shares for for every four preference shares so this will tell you how many shares purchasing company will issue i think it is come it is thirty thousand. now this time shares are being issued at the rate of 12. so you need to understand here four thousand share divided by four multiplied by 30 that will tell you how many shares purchasing company will issue to the preference shareholder so we have already computed thirty thousand share this time issue rate is 12 so total will be 360 again the form of payment is equity share even to the preference shareholders of acquiry entity purchasing company is making a payment by way of equity shares is it clear to you now we will see later on that under net payment method under net payment method only payments received by equity shareholder and preference shareholders of acquiry entity only payments given to shareholders of acquiry entity will constitute the amount of purchase consideration. So that is why I have written here purchase consideration 11 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? Right sir, it is absolutely clear. So under net payment method, you have to see how much payment is being delivered to the shareholders only. But there could be a possibility that question might state that payment is being given to a party other than the shareholder. For example, in this particular question, deventure holders are also being given some payment. And as per the language of the question, what was written? That total worth of deventure of vendor company is equal to 2 lakh. Total worth of, there are 2 lakh rupees, 2 lakh worth of deventures of vendor company. And vendor company is interested in paying their debenture at the rate of 20%. So first of all, I will compute 20%. So vendor company is interested in paying to their debenture holders at a premium of 20%. So 2,40,000. Now purchasing company will issue debentures so that Deventure holders of vendor company could be paid at 20% premium means so that deventure holders of vendor company could be paid 240. That means purchasing company will issue its own debentures to pay off what we call rupees 240,000 worth of deventure holders of vendor company. So this 240,000 worth of deventure purchasing company will have to issue. And if the face value of debenture is not given, it is always considered as hindered. For example, in this particular question, it is written, issue of such an amount of 15% debenture, that means purchasing company will issue its 15% debenture at par, so that 10% debentures of vendor company, 10% debenture of acquiry company could be discharged at 20% premium. So that is why, first of all, I noted down the value of debentures of acquiry company 
and 20% to lakh 40 so purchasing company will issue 15% debenture so that debentures of vendor company could be paid off at 2 lakh 40 that mean in order to discharge the debenture purchasing company is issuing debentures but rupees 2 lakh 40 thousand worth of debenture purchasing company will have to issue however you have computed it this in this manner 2 lakh plus 20 percent total amount 2 lakh 40 so rupees 2 lakh 40 thousand worth of 15 percent debenture will be issued by purchasing company but if a party other than shareholder if a party other than shareholder besides shareholder if any other party of acquiry company will receive the payment that payment will not be included for the computation of purchase consideration under net payment method only payment received by the shareholder will be considered for the computation of purchase consideration then what will be the treatment of debentures now the question is this first of all you need to understand one important aspect i told you initially in this particular question in this particular question there are three liabilities there are three liabilities these are the three liabilities and it is clearly given that only creditors and staff provident fund is being taken over however it is also given that debentures are receiving some payment from the purchasing company and debenture is a party other than shareholders correct if a party other than shareholder will receive payment then you will presume as if even this liability has been taken over correct now you have to presume that even this liability has been taken over is it clear to you or not if we are presuming this liability has been taken over what is the replication the replication is that now vendor company need not require to pay them off now vendor company need not require to pay them off because if it is not taken over then vendor company will have to pay them off but because even the debenture holders are receiving some payment so vendor companies escaped off now to paying the debenture holders is it clear to you or not so this is the point which you need to understand so once you have computed the amount of purchase so important thing is that under net payment method i have written a note also separately below Correct. I have written here note also that only the payment received by shareholders of acquiry company that is equity or preference shareholder will constitute the amount of purchase consideration number one. And if a party other than shareholder would receive any payment in that case first number one you are not such liability now will be considered as if being taken over. Number two now in the books of purchasing company we will pass entry after passing the first entry where we generally write as a taken over liability taken over later on we will pass another entry to entity sorry another entry to pay off the debentures is it clear to you i will just explain the whole concept now by now you are well aware that we have to prepare actually all these accounts number one acquirer company account now because in this question there are preference shareholders this is the first question if there are preference shares also of vendor company of vendor company then it is better to prepare their account at uh, second number then the realization account and then cash account and then shareholders account is it clear to you now if you look into the liability there are hardly much item one is equity share capital first of all as usual i am going to post them to the credit side of shareholders then reserve fund is also there so reserve fund will also find place here there are three liabilities and so many times now i have all, already told you when we will post the items from the balance sheet to the respective amount we will not care about the fact whether liabilities have been taken over or not irrespective of the fact whether liabilities have been taken over or not first of all we will have to post them to the credit side of realization account so that is why all three liabilities even though debentures haven't been taken over but still i have posted them here correct number one now liability side is closed coming over to the asset side there is property plant and equipment and current asset and in this question it is clearly mentioned cash hasn't been taken over if cash account hasn't been taken over where i need need to post the cash account obviously on the debit side of the cash account correct so now our assets and liability side is closed after closing down the assets and liability side then we will pass the entry for this correct for purchase consideration i will write by acquirer company we have computed total of purchase consideration 11 lakh 10 i will cross this 
here i will write here to realization 11 lakh 10 now i will receive the payment now in this question we are not receiving any cash purchasing company is making payment to equity shareholder and preference shareholder however payment is being made by way of equity share only so i will write here equity share in acquirer company 11 lakh 10000 but this time i have to be careful because we are preparing preference shareholder account we are preparing preference shareholder account and equity shareholder account see here out of 11 lakh 10000 worth of equity share actually 3 lakh 60000 worth of equity shares are being given to the preference shareholder so that is why I'm writing on the debit side of preference shareholder two shares in acquirer company. And similarly, equity shares are receiving shares equal to 7,50,000. So whatever shares be from the purchasing company received by preference shareholder will find place on the debit side of preference shareholder. And whatever portion of the purchase consideration received by equity share will find place on the debit side of equity shares. Another important point is that if you are preparing preference shareholder account, the moment you are going to actually post the portion of purchase consideration which is flowing to the preference shareholder in the preference shareholder account, the moment you are going to post that, you should not forget to close this particular account. Now, if we are going to close this particular account, actually 4 lakh worth of preference shareholders are there. So, but vendor company is making a payment to prefer preference shareholder 360. Some of you might get confused. You might think, sir, where vendor company is making the payment? Payment is being given by the preference shareholder. No, my dear. The fact is that actually purchasing company, purchasing company is delivering all these things to vendor company and then vendor company will make the payment to their parties. Correct? So that is why 3,60,000 worth of payment will be given to the preference shareholder in full settlement. So that means... Preference shareholder were worth rupees 4 lakh, but they received a payment of 360. So indirectly, it is a gain to you. So in fact, whatever balance will be there in the preference shareholder, that will be posted to the realization account. Is it clear to you? So that is why this gain will be taken over here. And I have put up an arrow also. So preference shareholder account. Preference shareholder account is closed. Now, we will check is there any liability which is not being taken over. In this question, definitely there is a liability 10% debenture holder which is not being taken over. Correct. This liability we have posted here already because we have to post all the liability whether being taken over or not. This liability is not taken over or not taken over. Logically, I should make a payment to them. But because debenture holders are receiving some payment, so now I need not require to make them the payment. Point is this. So that is why we are not making any payment. V means the vendor company. So, and no expenses are also given in the question. So I will now close this particular account. So 4,50,000 will be your profit. Now this profit will be taken to the credit side of this account. So your shareholders account will get closed already cash in the cash account there is a balance of three lakh you will first of all write here then you are going to close your shareholders account it will get automatically closed is it clear to you now in the books of purchasing company all the assets which we have taken over then see here in the books of purchasing company we will write the figures at which we are taking over the assets and liability 10 percent debentures are being taken over at two lakh forty thousand don't forget so that is why I have written here at 240. And now I will write creditors which we have taken over and now uh, uh, this provident fund. You might say, sir, but debentures haven't been taken over. I just told you, even though this particular question has stated that debentures haven't been taken over, but because debenture holders are being made payment, correct? So now you will presume that even debentures have been taken over. That is the point. That is the only point which you need to take care of. If any liability other than shareholder will receive some payment from the purchasing company, you will not make it a part of purchase consideration number one. And now it will be presumed that even such liabilities have been taken over. The balancing figure will be put as goodwill, no doubt about that, correct? And now I will make the payment for consideration, consideration account debit, now I will write equity share capital. Total number of equity share will be 75,000 plus 30,000, 1 lakh 5,000 into 10. 75,000 shares are being issued to equity share, 30,000 to preference shareholders. So total 1 lakh 5. But out of these 1 lakh 5,000 share, 30,000 shares have been issued at a premium of rupees 2. This is how you are going to pass the entry. But another point is that 
See here. Now we have written here debentures. We have written here debentures not because of the fact that in reality we are taking over the debenture, but because we are making a payment to the debenture holder. So first of all, we will presume that we have taken over the debenture. We will write here and now we will pay off the debenture. Now this debenture will be given 15% debenture. This entry you will have to pass in the books of this particular entity. Is it clear to you or not? So this is how you have to do this particular question. Now in this question, there are some further topics like intercompany holdings, correct? And intercompany holdings, we shall talk a lot about this particular point, but you will have to wait this particular session what we have got for you. Now we are talking about acquirer company, acquirer company having shares in acquiry company, correct? Often it happens and last time if you are going to actually uh, it, in the if you are going to look at what we call question paper of 24 we found actually one question struck from this particular topic I will let you know later on but first of all let's have a look over this particular question here in this particular question here acquirer company hold share in acquirer company what does it mean I will explain the entire concept just pay attention this is the balance sheet of two company and figures are in lakhs. So 22 lakh worth of what we call tangible fixed assets, property, plant and equipment. Some investments of both the companies are given. Current assets are also given. Besides that equity, share capital, general reserve. Generally, when you are going to get such question, question will simply ask you to compute the amount of purchase consideration. But I will do the full flat solution for you. First of all, under such question, just pay attention. It is written that investment of X limited represents 25,000 shares of Y limited. Investment of X limited represents 25,000 shares of Y limited. This is the Y limited. Y limited is the acquiry company. Question says that this investment of 3.25 lakh, correct 3 lakh 25,000 that mean acquirer company has paid 3,25,000 rupees to buy 25,000 shares of Y limited. That mean acquirer company is already having 25,000 shares of Y limited. Is it clear to you? To be more specific, just pay attention here. If I will look into the number of shares of Y limited, you can see the, their total share capital is 10 lakh. So I have written here rupees 10 lakh and one share is of 10 total number of shares of acquiry company Y limited is 1 lakh out of 1 lakh 25,000 shares are held by acquirer company that is why it becomes a case where acquirer company is already having some shares of acquiry company correct number one further it is written X limited acquires Y limited X limited is acquiring Y limited, but X limited is already having some investments in the Y limited. That means they are already having some shares. Out of total number of 1 lakh shares, acquirer company is having 25,000 shares. Further, just to confuse you, generally it will be given this way. There are some investment made by Y limited also. So Y limited has, has also made some investments. So these are normal investment. They might have invested some monies elsewhere. So their investment is 5 lakh, but it is given this investment is having a market value of 6 lakh. So this investment which Y limited has made elsewhere, its value is 6 lakh. Now question is simply asking you to prepare a statement showing the number of shares allotted by X limited to Y limited. You can take it from my side. If the question from this particular topic is strike in the examination, you will be asked only to prepare this statement. Now, Question state that prepare a statement showing the number of shares. So how many number of shares X limited will have to have to issue to discharge the consideration for taking over Y limited that will be decided by intrinsic value of share. I have already told you. So now the as a first step under this particular step, we need to determine the intrinsic value of the shares. Now here, very important point. First of all, First of all, you are going to compute the intrinsic value of Y limited, the company in which we have made the investment, the company in which investment has been made, correct? X limited has made investment in Y limited. So first you are going to determine the intrinsic value of Y limited. In order to determine the value of Y limited, I will write here all the assets. First of all, I will take into account their tangible fixed asset then their investment market value is 6 lakh Y limiteds. 
then current assets so total asset is equal to 16,65 there are liabilities in the form of 12% debentures and creditors so total net assets is 1,65,000 correct and then I am going to divide it by is it uh, well it is I think 16,50,000 let me check it up I think this figure is wrong uh, it is equal to how much this figure 165 my I think this figure is actually this figure is 15 lakh kindly just this is 15 lakh correct 16 lakh 65 minus 1 lakh 10 minus 55 so that will be equal to 15 lakh so 15 lakh is the net assets or assets available for equity share because no preference share capital is there now I will divide it by number of share total number of shares of Y limited is 1 lakh so intrinsic value will be 15 correct now I will compute the intrinsic value of X limited here you have to be very cautious first of all you will write the tangible fixed asset 22 lakh now actually the value of investment of X limited is given to us as 3 lakh 25,000 this value is already given to us but I cannot write here 3 lakh 25,000 it is given to us that investment which we have made means acquirer company 3,25,000 is the cost of the investment we have purchased 25,000 shares of Y limited so what I will do here in order to know the present value of my investment I know that I have made investment in 25,000 shares of Y limited and now we have computed the intrinsic value of Y limited that is 15 so worth of investment is 375,000 this is the most important area which you need to take care of is it clear to you that is why intrinsic value of Y limited will be computed first and then you are going to compute the intrinsic value of X limited so once you have computed the intrinsic value of X limited total assets then subtract two liabilities then you will get you will get uh, oh my god just wait I think it is 33 lakh 380 so this is the total actually is this 380 is total and this 165 it is also total uh, then I will get 15 lakh and then I will get 30 lakh in this case total net assets will be equal to 30 lakhs 30 lakh divided by 15 then I will get 60 as the intrinsic value of share so intrinsic value of share is equal to 60 is it clear to you after having determined the intrinsic value of the respective companies now the next question arises how many shares we which the purchasing company will have to issue to the vendor company how to compute it under uh, under such a scenario where acquirer company is already having some shares see here amount of consideration payable total number of shares first of all of acquiry company you note down now this time out of 1 lakh 25,000 shares are already held by us are you getting my point that means there are only 75,000 such shareholders to whom we are supposed to make the payment is it clear to you or not is it clear so first of all out of total number of shares of acquiry company you subtract the number of shares held by acquirer entity this will tell you how many shareholders are there to whom actually you are supposed to make the payment because out of one lakh you are already having 25,000 shareholders you need not require to pay them off so to 75,000 shareholder you are supposed to pay how much amount you need to pay them so what is the value of 75,000 shares of acquiry company you multiply it with the intrinsic value of acquiry company this is intrinsic value of acquiry company so that will tell you the worth of 75,000 share which is equal to 11,25,000 so in this case purchase consideration payable will be considered as 11,25,000 so 11,25,000 is the amount of consideration which you are supposed to pay now the next question is how many shares which you will have to issue so consideration payable 11,25,000 you divide it by your own intrinsic value as we normally do so I will get 18,750 share so that mean 18,750 shares of 10 each at the rate of 50 I am supposed to issue 18,750 share at the rate of 10 each I am supposed to issue and I will issue them at the rate of 50 premium 18,750 share of 10 each at the rate of 60 I will issue it directly it means at a premium of 50 so now in the books of acquirer company how I am going to pass the entry the first entry is quite vital because you made investment at a cost of 3,25,000 
this was the value of your investment in Y Limited. But now you computed that this value is has gone up to 375,000. Correct? So the first entry which you are going to pass in the books of acquired company is for increase in value of investment. And we have already seen earlier under India Centered in 3 proper that if the value of investment will increase, then we will credit it either to PNL or to OACI. But if nothing is mentioned, we always credit it to PNL. So we will credit the increase in value to this account. Now, how to pass the entry for assets taken over? I will take assets taken over. Now I will write here their investment. We are taking over their investment 6 lakh and the value of their investment is 6 lakh. 65,000 current asset, correct? We are taking over the liability of acquiry company. And as you know, and co consideration amount is 11 lakh 25. And as you know, under business combination, I told you that previously held investment must be cancelled. So previously held investment now has gone up to 375. So you will cancel them here, 375. Is it clear to you? Actually, when we ca we are cancelling it, Correct. When we are cancelling it indirectly, it means I am writing the total purchase consideration. Okay. But you need not require to bother unnecessarily. Simply remember that you have to actually cancel this one. Now you will discharge the amount of consideration 11,25,000. This is the amount of purchase consideration. And for that, you have just figured out that you are issuing 18,750 shares of 10 each. You will write here 1,87,500. And then security premium will be this much. Now, suppose if I ask you to prepare the balance sheet, logically, when you are going to get question from this topic, you are not going, no, you are not going to be asked so many things. But still, I have already told you when we prepare the balance sheet, our own values will find place at carrying value, and whatever assets and liabilities which we have taken over as per the entry, we will simply add them. But in the balance sheet, we will write our only own equity share capital because we are not taking over their share capital. Equity share capital is 5 lakh, but we have just issued 1,87,500 worth of share capital. So I am going to add it. Total share capital will be this much. My general reserves is 26,20,000. Our security premium, because security premiums 9,37,000 we have just written. So under other equity, I will write general reserve security premium and our own profit and loss account. We will not take, we haven't taken over their general reserve or their profit or loss account. So total amount is equal to this much. Similarly, our debentures were 2 lakh and we have taken over their debentures. So I will write now 330. Similarly, sundry creditors, we have 160. We have taken over their creditor. I will simply add it. Then towards the asset side, our own assets. And we have taken over their assets, so we will add them, total amount 32. Now, in investment, see here, our investment in the balance sheet return is 3,20,000. First, I will write 320, but value of our investment has gone up, I will add 50,000. Then I cancelled investment, credited the investment, so I have deducted here 375. And we, in fact, our own investment will not appear in the balance sheet, you can see. And we have taken over their investment 6 lakh because we have cancelled our investment. So that is why our investment is not appearing in the balance sheet. And then current assets we will write. This is how we have to prepare the, this is how we have to uh, do this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? I hope you are able to grasp it. Correct? Now, another question, and this is also very important question from the examination point of view. Uh, Intercompany holdings, where we saw one case where the acquire, acquirer company is already having some investments in the what we call acquiry entity. Correct, last time when we did question number 5.1, over there we talked about the accounting aspects when acquirer company have made some investment in the acquiry company already. I hope am I am audible to everyone. If that is the situation, kindly let me know of that. So now we are going to begin the session for the day and uh, we will start with 5.22. Now over this particular question, first of all, even this question is similar to the one which we did in the last session. Here it is written that the following are the balance sheets of good limited and bad limited as on 31st of 3, 2026. So this is the balance sheet before you. Now as far as this particular balance sheet is given over there, you can see good limited and bad limited. This is the balance sheet. Figures are in Karos. This is where exactly you need to pay attention to.
correct those among you who are already present actually kindly let me know that i am uh, audible and voice is coming uh, quite okay so if that is the situation kindly let me know of that and if there is some problem also let me know of that anyway we will continue now later on we will see that in this particular question actually good limited happens to be the acquirer company and acquiry company will be your bad limited but so far in the question it is not written i am telling you in advance now coming over to the liability side we have here equity correct thank you karthik so in this particular case share capital authorized share capital is given remember one thing we are not at all concerned with the authorized share capital correct we will have to look into the issued and subscribed capital so we have seen here that as far as issued and subscribed capital of acquirer company good limited is concerned that is 12 crore while it is of 5 crores is it clear to you then we move over to other equity as far as other equity other equity means reserves general reserve profit and loss account etc that is 88 and 10 now here you have to pay a bit of attention non current liability and in the column of acquiry company it is written unsecured loans from good limited i have already told you in this case there are two companies good limited and bad limited so far <coughs> so far it is not written who is the acquirer in acquiry but i am telling you in advance that in this case actually good limited is acquirer entity a1 stands for acquirer correct and b2 limited is actually b limited is acquiry entity now in the column of b limited is it, it is written unsecured loan correct this is written in the column of b limited towards the liability side obviously it means actually it is a liability for bad limited is it clear it is a liability because they have taken unsecured loan but they have taken this loan from good limited important point which you need to know so such transaction is known as intercompany transaction and how inter intercompany transaction will would be handled that i will let you know in a short while but its treatment will be done only in the books of acquirer entity then further it is given current liability <coughs> that is equal to 133 lakh and 115 lakh then we move further in this case here we have non current asset and property plant and equipment cost less depreciation is given that means the net value is given to you 20 lakh 6 lakh now important point is investments you can see this investment is written in the column of good limited and this amount is 3 crore that means good limited has spent 3 crores rupees in acquiring 30 lakh shares of 10 each 30 lakh shares of 10 each in order to acquire 30 lakh shares of 10 each they have spent actually 3 lakh they have already done this particular investment and this investment has been done in bad limited that being if we will look carefully total share capital of bad limited is 5 crores total share capital is 5 crores now 5 crores 5 crores that mean near about what we call 500 lakhs i think i am correct 500 lakhs or 5 crores is one and same thing we presume one share is of rupees 10 each that mean 50 lakh is the total number of share of bad limited so out of 50 lakh shares of bad limited this company is already having 30 lakh worth of shares 30 lakh worth of shares are already in our hand you can see here investment 30 lakh shares of 10 each and in order to acquire 30 lakh worth of shares they have churned out actually 3 crore rupees is it clear to 3 crore means 300 lakhs now further again you need to have a look over this particular item here it is written long term loans to bad limited long term loans to bad limited we have already seen actually correct earlier i told you that this entity b limited has taken a loan of 10 lakh so obviously it is written on towards the liability side of bad limited and because good limited has given this loan to bad limited so it will be considered as an asset for the good limited and that is why towards the asset side of good limited this amount is written correct long term loans to bad limited 10 lakh it will be considered as an asset for the company which has discharged which has delivered the loan then we have current asset 200 lakh and 134 lakh so far fine now 
Further question says that on that date, Good Limited absorbed bad. Now we come to actually the conclusion that here in this particular case, which company happens to be the acquirer? Which one is the acquirer entity? Good Limited happens to be the acquirer entity, isn't it or not? Then further it is written, members of Bad Limited are to get one equity shares of Good Limited issued at a premium of two per share for five shares held by them. Could anyone among you tell me in fact, before I ask the question, let me actually just remind you, when we did the similar sort of question where acquired company had already made some investment in the acquiry company, but the last question, correct, was related to intrinsic value of method. You know, purchase consideration can be actually computed either through net assets method, intrinsic value method or net payment method. Could you tell me in this particular case, which method is being adopted? to compute the purchase consideration by good limited because it is written this time this time it is written then members of bad limited members of bad limited will get one equity share only one equity share they will receive from the acquirer entity one equity share of good limited good limited is the acquirer entity members of bad limited that means shareholders of bad limited will receive only one share and that share will be issued at a premium of rupees 2 per share but it is written for every 5 shares for every 5 right Upendra Rajwar you are absolutely right you have hit the nail beautifully so in this particular case it is a case of net payment method because clearly it is stated that this time good limited is going to issue only what we call one share for five shares but the shares will be issued at the rate of as you must have noticed 12 per share because at rupees 2 per premium so first of all what we need to do see here first of all as usual we are going to find out the total number of shares of bad limited now i just told you total share capital of bad limited is 5 crore now if i am going to convert them if I'm going to write them over here, I will write 500 lakh. 5 crore is nothing but actually 5 crore or 500 lakh are one and same thing and one share we presume of 10 each. So total number of share will be considered as 50 lakh. Correct? So total number of shares is 50 lakh. Further in this particular question, it is given that purchasing company is going to issue only one share for 5 shares. Correct? Only, and could anyone among you tell me actually how this ratio 1 is to 5 would have been determined actually it is given in the question that purchasing company will issue only one share for five shares so how they would have had reached this conclusion that we are going to issue only one share against the five share how they would have had reached this conclusion through intrinsic value of share method that means they must have computed the intrinsic value of both the companies. I told you in practical life that how many share purchasing company is going to deliver to the shareholders of the acquirer company that, that is decided by actually intrinsic value of share. So earlier they must have computed the intrinsic value and, and accordingly they must have decided that acquirer entity will issue only one share against five shares. Anyway, the point is that we are issuing one share for five shares. And further it is given one share which is being issued by the acquirer entity will be issued at the rate of rupees 12 at rupees 2 per premium. Now in order to know the cons consideration, what we need to do first of all we need to take into account the total number of shares of acquiry entity as we did in the last question also 50 lakhs. Out of that, if you remember the last day what we did, we plugged out actually those shares which are already held by us. So out of 50 lakh shares of acquiry company, 30 lakh worth of shares are already held by the acquirer entity. So quite obviously we cannot make to our own shareholders. Are you getting my point or not? Only payment can be made to outside shareholders. That means as far as bad limited is concerned, their total number of share is 50 lakh. Out of his 20 lakhs are already, sorry, out of that, 30 lakh shares are already held by the acquirer entity and 20 lakh shares, it means belong to outsiders. So now to the outsider, we have to make the payment to outsiders. So outside shareholders are 20 lakh and as per the terms for five shares, for five share, we will issue only one share. So that means and these and also we are issuing the share at the rate of rupees 12. So 20 lakh divided by five means we have to issue only four lakh share at the rate of rupees one is so total amount is 48 lakh or you can directly divide 48 lakh 
correct by the issue rate of your price you can also get 4 lakh shares but you can also find number of share 4 lakh from here itself so all in all we are issuing 4 lakh shares of 10 each at the rate of rupees 12 to discharge the consideration because consideration will be considered in this particular case 48 lakh the payment which is being which is being delivered to the outside shareholders is it clear to you or not so in this case so total purchase consideration is 50 lakh is it clear to you now due to some or other reason i'm simply asking you one question suppose if we because total number of share is equal to 50 lakh out of 50 lakh 30 lakhs are already in our pocket and 20 lakhs is 20 lakh are outsiders and we have already computed that to the outsiders we are supposed to make a payment of 48 lakh rupees we have computed this I'm simply asking you a general question. Suppose if I would have asked you, tell me how much amount you would have had paid to 30 lakhs. Suppose. So suppose if you would have paid to 30 lakh shares, then you would have paid. The, first of all, you would have divided it by 5 into 1 because for 5 shares, you are going to issue 1 shares. That means total number of shares 6 lakh and you would have made the payment at the rate of rupees 12 so all in all you would have made a payment of 72 lakh suppose if you would have made the payment to 30 lakh shareholders presume that these 30 lakh shareholders for a while are also outsiders then in that case you would have paid 72 lakh to them actually why i computed this figure the reason being is that although it is not needed but what you need to know that you have already made investment in the other entity and the investment which you have made in the other entity at a cost of 3 crores at a cost of 3 crores or 300 lakhs whatever it is is it clear to you now by determining this amount what you what conclusion you are driving that the fair value of your investment now has come to only 70 72 lakhs that mean your fair value of your investment has fallen down or in simple words the value of your investment has fallen down because you made you purchase the purchase 30 lakh share by paying actually 3 crores now today if those 30 lakh share would be paid they would be paid only 72 lakh that means value of your investment is only 72 lakh your value has fallen almost by 228 lakhs it means actually correct Anyway, first of all, we need to take into account, once again, I am repeating, 50 lakh total number of share, pluck out the number of share which you are already having, less 30 lakh, these shares are already held by acquirer, outsiders 20 lakh, then you divide it by 5, multiply it with 1, because for 5 shares, we are issuing 1 share at the rate of rupees 12, total amount happens to be 48 lakh. Then, uh, you can also find out number of share this way around by dividing it by 12. So 4 lakh shares of 10 each at the rate of 12. This is the amount of purchase consideration. Now entries in the books of the acquirer company. Actually logically the first entry which you need to write is with respect to the changes in the value of your earlier investment. That is why I computed this figure. Is it clear to you? Because you want to know what is the value of your investment you, which you made earlier. Your earlier investment was 30 lakh at a cost of 3 crores or 300 lakhs but as we saw its value has come down to 72 lakh that means its value has fallen by 2.28 so that is why in the books of acquirer entity my first entry will be profit and loss account debit it's a loss correct and so loss will be debited to profit and loss account and value has fallen by 2.28 or 228 lakhs but I am writing the figures in crore that is why I have written here 2.28 is it clear? This is the first thing which you need to do. I hope till up to this particular point, things are clear to everyone. Is it clear? And then, as usual, we are going to now pass the entry for the asset taken over and liability taken over. But I cautioned you with respect to one thing. Could anyone among you actually recapitulate that particular point? While writing the entry, in case of intercompany holding, this is a case of intercompany holding in the sense means one company is already having some investment in the other entity. So first of all, property, plant and equipment which you have taken over, then you will write liabilities. You will also, uh, the liabilities are current liability, unsecured loan. And then consideration, that is 0.48 which we computed. Now see here, this is the point actually I mentioned earlier. You need to cancel out your earlier investment. But now your value of your earlier investment is just 0.72 crores or 
72 lakhs is it clear to you or not you need to cancel it out in this case balancing figure is coming towards this particular side so it will be considered as gain on bargain purchase is it clear to you or not and then we will deliver the amount of purchase consideration in order to pay purchase consideration we are issuing equity share we are issuing 4 lakh share but problem is that we have to mention here 4 lakh into 10 that is equal to 40 lakh or 0 0.40 crore and 4 lakh shares are being issued at, at a premium at the rate of 2 per share. So 4 lakh into 2 will be 8 lakhs or 0 0.08 crore. This is how you need to pass the entry. And another entry with respect to cancellation of intercompany debts. I have already told you in this particular question, acquirer company has given a loan to what we call bad limited. So this is this will be considered intercompany transaction. And in order to cancel out the intercompany transaction, we will debit the liability and we will credit the asset is it clear to you or not so unsecured loan account debit to loan from bad limited it will be cancelled out and it will now not appear in the balance sheet because this loan has been cancelled out importantly when this question was asked in the examination over there surprisingly they also asked entries in the sorry uh, entries in the books of acquiry entity they also asked entries in the books of acquiry entity so what entry we are going to pass in the books or acquiry entity you have to remember the accounting aspects what is the first aspect we have to transfer all the asset to the debit side of realization account now your focus should be towards only acquiry entity that is in the column of the bad limited so you find that there are only two assets so you will transfer them to the debit side of realization account so your entry will be realization account debit to property plant and to what we call current asset account is it clear to you or not is it clear to everyone correct then likewise all the liabilities will be transferred irrespective of the effect whether taken over or not to the credit side of realization account so your entry will be like this you have credited realization account and liabilities are debited because liabilities are getting closed and you are transferring them to the credit side after this one important point is that towards the liability side there is share capital and share capital is 5 crore but here you cannot transfer the entire share capital to the shareholders account as we know that share capital generally is transferred to the shareholders account in the books of the acquiry entity. So here you have to exercise caution and that caution need to be exercised only in case of what we call intercompany holdings because some of the share capital is already held by the acquirer entity. So that mean only such share capital which belong to outsiders will be transferred to the shareholders account. And rest of the share capital, which is already held by the acquirer entity, now it will be considered as a gain to you, gain to the acquiry entity. Why it will be considered as, as a gain to the acquiry entity point is that because their total share capital is 5 crore. Now out of 5 crores, we have already seen actually 3 crores worth of share capital is held by acquirer entity and 2 lakh is held by outsiders. And they have written share capital towards the liability side as 5 crore. Now, because now acquiry entity need not require to pay off these 3 crore worth of share capital because this is already held by the acquirer entity. They have to take care of only outsiders. So that is why this share capital is cancelled in the sense because now their company is being taken over by the acquirer entity. So it will be considered as a gain to the acquiry entity. So that is why out of total share capital, that portion which is already held by the acquirer entity need to be transferred to the realization account. It is a gain. It is clear to you and then share portion of the share capital belonging to the outsiders that portion only need to be posted to the credit side of shareholders account and then on the liability side <coughs> on the liability side other equity you simply write other equity this entry is wrong actually now cut it out other equity account debit to other share uh, to equity shareholders account 10 10 is it clear to you this is how you are going to pass the entry and then we will pass the entry for purchase consideration due so acquirer entity account debit to realization account this is due entry then we will receive the amount of consideration so we are receiving shares so shares in purchasing company account debit 
to purchasing company or you can directly transfer them to shareholders account finally you will tally your realization account there will be a loss and then that loss will be transferred to the debit side of shareholders account this is how you are going to pass the entry in the books of acquiry entity which is not a tough task but only thing is that when you are going to post the amount of share capital there you need to be a little bit alert in the sense that entire share capital wouldn't be actually posted to the credit side of shareholders account only that portion which is held by outsiders the portion which is held by acquirer need to be posted to the credit side of realization why because it is a gain to you so after having completed un under intercompany topics generally there are three topics but now you will have to do only two because in your module we have seen actually there is no question with respect to cross holdings so under intercompany holding one situation we have already seen where acquirer entity was having acquirer entity was having some investment in the acquiring entity we have already seen this now we are going to see the opposite situation in this case acquiring entity acquiring entity let us say acquirer entity is a1 and acquiring entity is a2 we will see that acquiring entity is already having actually some shares in the what we call acquirer entity already before this entity was taken over by a1 they were already having some shares of a1 are you getting my point on in this case acquirer entity is already having some shares so second situation now we come across here i have written when acquiry company hold share in acquirer company when acquiry company is already having some shares in acquirer company so how we are going to proceed under such situation following are the balance sheet of the two companies y limited and jet limited as at 31st of december 2025 generally generally when you would receive question from such topic you will see balance sheet will contain very few items only correct so y limited jet limited we will see later on that in this particular case y limited is acquirer entity and jet limited is acquiring entity correct now sundry assets only sundry assets are given besides that as you can see here this time 1000 shares in y limited and this is written in the column of jet limited 1000 shares in y limited correct that mean if i am going to take into account total number of shares of y limited total number of shares of acquirer entity now if you will look carefully their total share capital happens to be 5 lakh correct and one share in bracket it is written is of 100 so that mean their total number of shares of acquirer entity is 5000 however out of these 5000 shares as we are going through the question we saw actually that 1000 shares are held by the other company that is jet limited and jet limited happens to be the acquiry entity so this amount is written in the column of jet limited number 1 and towards the asset side it is written that mean these are the investment done by jet limited and they have purchased 1000 shares of rupees 100 each and because in the outer column it is written 1 lakh that mean they also paid an amount of 1 lakh in order to purchase 1 lakh worth of shares of acquirer entity they have paid only 1 lakh is it clear to you no extra amount was paid now besides towards the liability side we have already seen there is share capital respectively 5 lakh 3 lakh then reserves 1 lakh and 55 and then we find that creditors are written 1 lakh 50 and 95000 only one liability and technically one asset is given in this particular question now now we come across that y limited was to absorb jet limited on the basis of intrinsic value of share more often than not you will find only intrinsic value of shares so in this case now at least you can conclude that y limited happens to be the acquirer entity having known which which one is the acquirer entity now we proceed further that purchase consideration was to be discharged in the form of fully paid shares and very important point here sometime we tend to neglect this point question states that entries are to be made at par value only what repercussion this particular line would have that i will let you know in a short while is it clear to you or not so why limited was to absorb jet limited number 1 intrinsic value of share is the basis for computing the shares and purchase consideration will be discharged by way of fully paid share to be very honest whenever question will be of intrinsic value of share i told you earlier also in that case mode of payment will, will would be only by way of shares correct now further it is written that entries will be made at par value only now what repercussion what 
influence this particular word will have in the solution i will let i will let you know but in a short while further in this question also in order to test you it is written a sum of 20000 is owed by y limited to z limited so it is a case of intercompany transaction intercompany transactions are incorporated in the books of acquirer entity it will have no effect in the books of acquirer entity and in the books of acquirer entity you will simply actually pass an entry creditors account debit to debtors account to cancel out intercompany transaction also there is another line also included in the stock of y limited 30000 worth of goods supplied by z limited at cost plus 20% those among you who have already done actually in the s10 through us they know very well get that it is a case of unrealized profit and those among you who are doing it first time i know that there are some student who are doing cfr first time for them it could be a little bit uh, something new but i will explain it further but let me tell you if such lines are given in the question they will have effect accounting effect only in the books of acquirer entity it will have no effect in the books of acquirer entity but first thing first and first thing first means first of all we need to determine the value of intrinsic value of share why because unless and until we will not have the intrinsic value of share we wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't be knowing actually how many number of share which we have to discharge so in order to compute the intrinsic value of shares if you remember last time actually i talked about this particular fact first of all you need to compute intrinsic value of that company of that company in which the investment has been made in case of interholding questions first of all you need to determine the value of int intrinsic value of share of that company in which the investment has been made in this question in which company investment has been made has it been made in the books of acquirer or acquiree in this question in which entity investment has been made in this question in which entity investment has been made you have already seen in this case jet limited has made the investments in the acquirer entity so acquirer entity is y limited in which actually investment has been made so first of all you need to compute intrinsic value of that company correct right right upendra so we find that and in order to compute the intrinsic value of shares you know how know the procedure we will take into account sundry asset only sundry assets are there of purchasing company and then only one liability is there 1 lakh 50 so net assets because there is no preference share capital it will be considered as net assets right aditya and this is net assets for equity shareholders divided by number of equity share which we have already seen 5000 so intrinsic value will be equal to 120 correct now you know the intrinsic value of share of y limited now you are in a position to compute the intrinsic value of that company which has made the investment their net assets are 3 lakh 50 and their investment actually is 1 lakh no doubt about that but we have to find out its present value that means present value means in present times at present so they have made the investment in 1000 shares and these 1000 shares investment was made in the acquirer entity and we have just computed intrinsic value of acquirer entity is 120 so their value of their investment will be considered 1 lakh 20000 that is why you need to compute the intrinsic value of that company first where in the investment has been made have been made correct so now jet limited 3 lakh 50 investment 120 and there is liability so net assets or assets available for equity share will be equal to 375 total number of shares of jet limited is equal to 3000 so in this case intrinsic value of share will be considered as 125 is it clear to you or not once you know the intrinsic value of share that happens to be 125 the next point is amount of consideration payable now in case in case one where acquirer company consider a1 as the acquirer and a2 as the acquirer company if a1 has made the investment in order to compute the purchase consideration first of all we take into account the total number of shares and then we subtract the number of shares held by us correct 
this is the methodology under the what we call case when acquirer company is already having some investment but here the situation is opposite here acquiry company is already having some shares of acquirer company so what we need to do in this particular case number of shares obviously of vendor company that is acquiry entity that is jet limited first of all as usual we are going to write as we normally write but this time see here i have written less held by acquirer this time none of the share of the acquiry entity is held by acquirer entity i have written here nil are you getting my point we are not holding any shares so all these shares will be considered outsiders now i will multiply it with intrinsic value of share whose intrinsic value of share i am supposed to make payment to 3000 shareholders 3000 shareholders of acquiry entity so the value of 3000 shares of acquiry entity if i want to know i will have to multiply it with the intrinsic value per share of acquiry entity so we can say total total value of 3000 shares of acquiry entity is 375000 try to learn the logic what is the value of 3000 shares of acquiry entity because acquiry company is having 3000 share all these shares are outsiders from our perspective and you are supposed to make payment to them obviously these shareholders will tell that intrinsic value of our share is 125 kindly pay us 375000 is it clear to you so that mean total consideration which need to be paid in this case will be 375000 now the next question is how many shares how many share acquirer company shall issue to discharge 375000 worth of consideration so this is the amount of consideration and now we are trying to find out the number of share which would be delivered by us so obviously now i will have to multiply divided by what we call our intrinsic value and our intrinsic value as we just saw was 1 120 so this brings us to the conclusion that we are supposed to issue 3125 shares 3125 shares that mean acquirer entity that mean acquirer entity acquirer entity need to issue 3125 shares to the acquiry entity to the acquiry entity but out of 3125 share which we are supposed to issue to the acquiry company because we are taking over the acquiry company and all the shareholders of acquiry company will become our shareholder after the take over no doubt about that but point is that out of 3125 share 1000 shares are already held by acquiry entity because the acquiry company is already having 1000 shares in our company so now why we should actually issue them the point is this so that is why you will subtract 1000 shares so that is why i have written here less shares already held by acquiry entity so this will give you how many number of share which you are going to issue now so now you will have to issue 2125 shares logically the amount of purchase consideration will be or should be 2125 2125 into 120 because intrinsic value of share of our company is 120 so logically this should have been the amount of purchase consideration but but in this particular question it is clearly written entries to be made at par value it means even though the intrinsic value is 120 but question has stated entries to be made at par value only indirectly it means actually i have to compute purchase consideration not by multiplying 120 but rather by multiplying it with the face value so that is the reason i have written here 2125 into 100 and i have also specified in bracket that not 120 is it clear to you so that is why your purchase consideration will be 2125 into 100 lakh 12500 another important point whenever and wherever the question would speak like this that entries to be made at par value only this should lead to the conclusion that it is a case of common control are you getting my point or not because we have already seen that one chief characteristic of common control is that even though the purchase consideration is being discharged at a premium I told you logically I should have multiplied it with 120. So, question one of the chief characteristic, as I just told, of common control is that purchase consideration must be recorded at par value only. So this line suggests that this is a case of common control. 
So under common control, when I am going to write the entry, just pay attention. In case of common control, actually there is hardly any difference. Only thing is that all the assets and liabilities will be written at book value and difference will be debited or credited to capital reserve only. Correct? So sundry assets we have taken. Then I will write current assets which we have taken over. Then I am going to write creditors which we have taken over. Then in this case, now I will write reserves also. Because if it is a case of common control, if it is a case of common control, if it is a case of common control in that particular case, in that particular case, you will take over all the assets, you will take over all the liabilities as usual. Besides that, there is, there is a very important line. Besides that, whatever reserves are appearing, for example, in this book, in the books of Jet Limited, there is a reserve of 55,000. There is a reserve which is appearing at 55,000. Correct? So, in case of common control, now acquirer company will have to maintain the entity of this reserve. Now, maintain the entity of this reserve. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that we are taking over the reserve because we cannot take over the reserve. It is as simple as that. Suppose if I would prepare... Uh, I would do accounting in the books of acquiry company. Quite obviously, the acquiry company must have transferred reserves and share capital to shareholders account. So it is already closed. So how can I take actually the reserves? Technically, reserves cannot be taken over. But common control characteristic states that you will take over all the assets which we have taken. We, we are going to take all the liability. Besides that, you will not take the reserve, but you will maintain the reserves. You will maintain the reserves. You will preserve the identity of the reserves. What does it mean? It means there is a reserve of 55,000 in the books of Jet Limited. Now, after taking over assets and liability, purchasing company or acquirer entity will create a reserve from their own resources. This is what we mean by preserving the entity. And many people actually misunderstand this. They think that we are taking over the reserve. You cannot take over the reserves. Is it clear to you? Only thing is that you are maintaining and preserving the entity. That means you are creating a sort of reserve from your own side, which was appearing in the books of what we call uh, acquiry entity. So that is why I will create a reserve from my side. Now, some of you might wonder actually when we did earlier common control question. Over there was over there also there were reserves, but at the time there was a negative balance. That is why I did not write anything. Only if there will be positive balance, then only you are going to create the end, uh, create the what we call uh, ID entity. Is it clear to you? That means in case of common control, you will take over assets, you will take over liability. If there are positive balance in the reserves, you will create such reserve from your own sites. You are not taking over their reserves. Are you getting my point? So, we will create a reserve of 55,000. Then I am going to write to consideration 2,12,500. Obviously, in this particular case, uh, in this particular case, difference is coming towards the debit side. But I told you, in case of common control, correct? Uh, thank you very much, Priya. And uh, just pay attention before you start writing. I would love you to comment. And last time I have selected the best comment. I've already told you in every class I am going, I'm selecting the best comment. And those will be definitely announced in the next session. The names of those students. Keep on writing the comments, but comments should be in the YouTube comment boxes, not on the chat boxes. So that others get an idea regarding the classes and the quality also. Now pay attention here. I have already told you, okay, you let me know of the answer. Why I am debiting here capital reserve? Why I am not debiting it uh, goodwill? Why I am not writing here good, goodwill? Okay. Aditya, Upendra, Pradeep, Pehra, Karthik, uh, Muthu Krishnan, I hope I have pronounced it correctly. And Priya, so these are the student, all I can see at this particular moment. If some of, some among more are present, then kindly let me know of. So my question is, while passing the entry in the books of common control, generally in the debit side, we have a habit of writing goodwill and on the Credit side, when figure appears, we write capital reserve or gain on bargain purchase. But why I am here writing actually capital reserve? It is a case, yes, yeah, Srinivasa Rajagopalan. 
I was not able to recapitulate your name. Let me tell you, you are one of the prize winners. So shortly in the next class, I will announce all the, so far, this is the fifth session. Among the four sessions, I have already picked the four names and you will definitely receive prize from my side. Correct. Anyway, uh, your comment, I definitely loved it. And I will announce, I will read the comments in the next session. Anyway, capital reserve is 12,500. Because it is a case of common control, I told you in case of common control, no new asset need to be recognized. Correct? No new asset need to be recognized. It is always better to put the difference to the capital reserve. Although de debit balance in capital reserve is nothing but goodwill because it is a capital loss. Now, you will pass the entry for payment of consideration. Entire payment is being made by way of share capital. Then cancellation of intercompany debts. I told you it was written in the question that both the companies are one company is owing 20,000 to the other company. You need not require to bother which company is owing the amount to the other company. You simply actually reduce your liability and reduce your assets by 20,000, 20,000. Correct. Now, in this particular question, there is there was another point with respect to unrealized profit. Let me explain. In this particular question, it was given that Jet Limited has sold some goods to Y Limited. Jet Limited has sold some goods to Y Limited. So what worth of goods were sold by Jet Limited to Y Limited? We are not concerned with that. Correct. What worth of goods were sold by Jet Limited to Y Limited? We are not concerned with that. What we are concerned of with is among those goods which have been sold by the acquiry company to the acquirer company, how many goods are remaining? So question has stated that 30,000 worth of goods are is still unsold. Now, it is also given in the question that these goods which were sold by acquirer entity at cost plus 20%. Acquiry company sold the goods at cost plus 20%. That means if cost is 100, obviously your margin is 20. That means selling price must be equal to 120. So rate of profit on selling price will be equal to 20 by 120. That means if sale amount is 6, profit element is 1. So obviously when purchasing, when this company sold goods to us, it must have earned some profit. And they must have credited the entire amount of profit to their profit or loss account. Correct at that time. But out of but out of those goods which were sold by Jet Limited, question is telling that 30,000 worth of goods are still in the stock of Y Limited. That means 30,000 worth of goods are still unsold. So first of all, you apply the profit margin on unsold goods. You come across that this amount is 5,000. That means whatever goods have remained unsold, you have to find profit element in it and it is known as unrealized profit. It is known as unrealized profit. Now, what is the treatment of unrealized profit? Actually, I have written the entry here, reserves account debit, correct? Reserves account debit or profit or loss account debit, you can write to sundry asset. That means I have to reduce the value because this 30,000 worth of stock which is being carried, actually its real price is 25,000 because it contains a profit element of 5,000. So we have to bring it to cost. So that is why first of all stock will be reduced. But actually in the question word stock is not written. That means stock must be included in sundry assets. So that is why I have written here sundry assets. Correct. Or you can directly write a stock 5000. Important point is that if the question is of common control, the unrealized profit element will be debited to reserve account. But if this question wouldn't have been of common control, in that case, where this amount would have been debited, it would have been debited to goodwill account. I have written, if it would have been a case of acquisition method, in that case, goodwill account would have been debited. So this point, if you can retain, that will hold you in a very good state. Correct. So almost everything we have done. Only last part we are moving over to that is external reconstruction. We have already seen earlier when I began the session last time, I told you what we mean by amalgamation. I told you amalgamation generally in practical life takes place between two entities between two entities which have equal financial stature and which are generally in the same line of trade. So sometimes they mutually agree upon to form a one single entity.
just to derive some mileages. For example, when we when the two companies or more than two companies amalgamate into a one single unit, they will have the monopoly in the market. They will have what we call long run cost of economies, which you have already studied. Anyway, so there are several advantages. We are not concerned with economics at this particular moment. This is what we mean by amalgamation. I also told you absorption, wherein a big company is taking over the business of a small company. And after the takeover, there will be existence of only big company. Now, point is that what is external reconstruction? If you remember last time I told you, some often when, it, when a particular entity actually undergoes several phases of losses, so company thinks actually it is better that we should, why not, we should actually convert ourselves into a new company. Actually, in my regular classes, we take lots of time to explain all these points, correct? But just to make the point, if you remember, the, I do not know how many among you are aware of this particular name, Binaka, Binaka toothpaste. Have you heard about this, Binaka toothpaste? How many among you have heard about Binaka toothpaste? To be very honest, none among you, correct? There was a time when this Binaka toothpaste was ruling the market. It was having complete monopoly. Even Colgate was not considered its competitor. Such a good market this particular uh, product was having way back, I think, in 50s or 60s. Is it clear to you? But due to some or other reasons, actually, suddenly this company started incurring losses. So what the directors decided, why not we should actually change Binaka company. So they liquidated the Binaka company and re-emerged by the name of Sibaka Limited. You might have heard about Sibaka Limited. Is it clear to you? So this Binaka Limited, uh, sir, could you please tell me if this line comes, it is net payment method. This is, this comes net asset method. Is it possible? Uh, which line actually I'm not able to get your point to be very honest with you, Karthik, could be a little bit more elaborate. All right. So some of some among the student told me actually that we have heard about Sibaka Limited, not Binaka Limited. Let me tell you, if you are going to ask your father today, sir, have you heard about Binaka? They will definitely tell you, yes, we know about Binaka. And there was a radio program very famous by the name of Binaka to Binaka Geet Bala program. Correct. Anyway, uh, so it re-emerged as a new entity, Binaka, uh, Sibaka Limited. In this case, it will be called as a case of external reconstruction and it will be called vendor company, it will be called new company or purchasing company. Is it clear to you? Just to stress the story a wee bit, Sibaka Limited for a while actually started earning profit but after some time it also actually started undergoing losses. Now management become very worrisome, what we should do? Then they again actually after Sibaka Limited, they have decided why not we should come back to Binaka Limited. So again, they came back to Binaka Limited. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Uh, Priya, you have turned suggestion for every safe estate. Don't spend so much time on India's under 300. Uh, definitely, we will take care of every aspect. Every aspect, don't worry about that. And But never say such thing because the reason behind is stand. Never say such thing because anything could strike from anywhere. If It seems actually you haven't gone through uh, the question papers very properly. Many questions have struck from this particular topic. For example, immediately after that, I have kept a section recent examination questions if you have seen actually questions have come from all these topics so often i do not know how actually you are saying so so kindly actually avoid such suggestions on public platforms anyway so here it is a case of binaka and sibaka limited which i was trying to tell you so after having done this now we will do this external reconstruction now as far as external reconstruction is concerned now, in case of external reconstruction, what we are supposed to do? Actually, honestly speaking, and I should be very honest, as far as external reconstruction is concerned, I don't think you will ever get a question from external reconstruction. But since we are doing it, let us finish it off also. External reconstruction, here it is written, there is a company by the name of Bricks Limited. And you can see actually they have got 20,000 equity share. And then we have got preference share capital and there is negative balance in profit and loss account as you know actually nowadays correct as you know 
in exam how to identify net asset method or net payment method what are the keywords i have already told you in case of net asset method karthik it will always be written that purchasing company is paying you some portion in cash and balance portion in shares correct or it could be written that purchasing company is paying so, some portion in cash or balance portion in cash so what balance is critical in that case net assets method now as far as current liabilities are concerned we come across here 12 percent debenture accrued interest unsecured loan and creditors these are the four liabilities which we are coming across is it clear to you besides that we have got freehold premises furniture patents and then non-current investments is it clear to you and then we are being given stock in trade debtors and bank balance further it is given the following scheme of external reconstruction was approved is it clear to you or not here it is written a new company by the name of trick limited to be formed to take over the business of bricks limited in this question it is written a new company by the name of tricks limited to be formed to take over the business of brick limited so this time the new company that is bricks limited is formed that means Trix Limited is getting liquidated and getting itself formed into Brick Company. Now, from the accounting aspects, we shall presume that Brick Limited, that Brick Limited, correct? Brick Limited is the purchasing entity, acquirer entity, while what we call Trick Limited will be considered as vendor entity. Is it clear to you or not? One equity share of 10 each. One equity share of 10 each, rupees 6 paid up is to be given in exchange for every two shares. Could anyone, just after having gone through this particular line, could anyone among you tell me, could anyone among you tell me how, which method I should apply to actually compute the purchase consideration? I told you, correct, you can easily figure it out. Very simple in this case. These are the three lines which the question has, in fact, these are the four points which question has specified. Now, as per these four points, you have to find out which method you have to adopt. Which method you have to adopt. Priya, I was just going through your, uh, this comments. So you have writ written very interesting point. Don't waste much time in, uh, uh, in days 103 and 10. To be very honest with you, you need to devote equal time to every, and in fact, we are consistently getting question from India days 110 and India days 103. For example, last time when we did the question, we did from India days 103 also. Correct? I mean to say in second, second session. So try to remember we have to take care of each and every subject and especially when we are pursuing a professional course, we cannot be selective. We have to give equal devotion and we will give equal devotion to each and every chapter. Comprehensive revision. It is not just a revision for the sake of revision, unlike others. Yes, so everyone has given me very correct answer. It's nice to see. In this case, it is a case of net payment method. Could anyone among you remember under net payment method what I said earlier? Correct? In the last session, when we talked about net payment method, I also talked about this particular fact that under net particular method, only payments being received by the shareholder will constitute the amount of, will constitute the amount of purchase consideration. Only payment received by equity shareholders and preference shareholder. If a party other than this, other than shareholder will receive any payment. For example, we will see in this case, in this case, there are two parties, debentures and creditors. They are also receiving some payment, but those parties will not be considered, but those parties will not be considered as for the computation of purchase consideration. Correct, the total amount received by equity and preference shareholder will become the amount of purchase consideration. And I also told if other parties are receiving the payment, now you will presume that other parties are also being taken over. However, in this question, nothing is mentioned which party is being taken over and which one is not being taken over. So in that case, you will have to assume that all the parties have been taken over. Is it clear to you? All the parties have, have been taken over. Now, how to compute the purchase consideration? First of all, one equity share of 10 each. One equity share of 10 each, six paid up, is being given for every two equity share. Is being given one equity share of rupees 10 each 
at the rate of 6 is being given for clearly written here where it is written I have forgotten myself uh, right here for every two share for every two equity share at least you can figure out that this payment is being received by equity shareholders so you are going to write here equity shareholders total number of equity shares first of all we will write 2 lakh now as per the language of the question it was given one share of 10 each 6 paid up so don't multiply it with 10 multiply it with 6 only that means purchasing company will issue one share for two share and whatever share we are issuing we are issuing as 6 paid up so 6 lakh will become the amount and this payment is being given by way of equity share this payment is being given to the equity shareholder and this is the form of payment it is being given by way of equity share similarly when we will take into account 11 percent preference share it is written one 11 percent preference share will be given one share one 11 percent preference share capital will be given in exchange for 15 shares of brick limited that mean for 15 share purchasing company is issuing only one share so here in this case first of all i will take into account the preference shareholder name of the party total number of preference share is 120 now it is written in the question that for 15 share for 15 share purchasing company will issue only one share is it clear to you and then one share is being issued at par so we will write multiply it with 100 total amount will be 8 lakh so ultimately this payment is by way of preference share preference shares are receiving the payment by way of preference share so total amount of purchase consideration will be 6 lakh plus 8 lakh that is equal to 14 lakh further in this question it is written claims of debenture holders of brick limited will be discharged by issue of equity shares of 10 each fully paid Claims of 12% debenture holders of Brick Limited would be discharged by issue of equity shares of 10 each. First of all, you need to know the claims of the debenture holder. What we mean by claims? Deventures are 8 lakh and accrued interest on debenture is 96. So claims of the debenture means the amount of debenture plus interest accrued thereon. So total amount of debenture holders claim will be considered 8 lakh 96 thousand. So that is why you are going to write here debenture holders claim are settled by issue of equity share. Total claims of debenture holder are 8 lakh 96 and you are going to issue that mean 8 lakh 96 thousand worth of equity share. However, this is a party other than shareholder. It will not be made part of purchase consideration. Further regarding creditors, question states that sundry creditor will receive 60% of their dues in cash. Now we find actually the total amount of creditor which is given in the question is 5 lakh 60 thousand. Now question says that 60% of the creditor that mean out of 5 lakh 60 thousand 60% 60 of the creditors are receiving their amount in cash in cash and 25% are receiving the amount by way of equity shares and balance 15% is foregone that means nothing is being given to them so that means total creditors are 5 lakh 60 60% 60 of them that means 3 lakh 36 thousand will receive cash and 25% will receive what we call equity share so total payment to creditors actually is worth rupees this much 4 lakh 76 thousand and total payment to debenture is actually 8 lakh 96 thousand and your total purchase consideration will be considered 14 lakh now in this case in this case when we will prepare accounts in the books of acquiry company the only difference is that there is a slight difference what is the difference first of all as usual mm -hmm. first of all as usual i am going to transfer all the assets to the debit side of the including bank because it is not written that bank is not taken over so we will transfer bank also to the debit side of realization account similarly all the liabilities whether taken over or not all the four liabilities will be posted to the credit side and then we come across equity share capital equity share capital is posted to the equity shareholder account and there is one item in the question profit and loss account negative balance logically profit and loss account negative balance actually is <coughs> The profit or loss account negative balance is nothing but accumulated loss and I told you generally the accumulated losses are posted to the debit side of equity shareholders account. Are you getting my point or not? So in this case I haven't posted profit or loss account to the debit side because if it is a question of external reconstruction in that case we prepare realization come reconstruction account or realization come reconstruction account what does it mean? 
only difference is that whatever items of reserves whatever items of reserves which you used to post to the credit side of what we call real shareholders account and whatever accumulated losses were there which you used to post to the debit side of what we call shareholders account will be posted to the realization account so in this case there is a debit balance in profit and loss account 14 lakh 20 that will be posted to the debit side of realization come reconstruction account this is the only difference rest of the methodology will remain same now i will write purchasing company purchase consideration 14 lakh and then i will prepare a acquirer company account or purchasing company account i will write here realization account we have seen that we are receiving the payment 6 lakh payment is being received by way of equity share and i think 8 lakh worth of payment is being received by way of preference share so this is equity shares mm -hmm. This is equity shares and this is actually preference shares. We are receiving 14 lakh. Now, whatever payment which you have received by way of equity share, you are going to post it to the debit side of equity shareholders account. Because in this question, there are preference shareholder also. You will write first of all balance brought down. Then whatever purchase consideration which you have received, you are going to post them here. And I told earlier also in one question that after having posted their portion of what we call purchase consideration, this account must be tallied. Correct, 12 lakh minus 8 lakh balancing figure will be 4 lakh. I also told earlier that whatever balancing figure will be there, it will be posted to the credit side of this account. Now, in this question, there is no such liability which we need to pay. All the liabilities have been taken over. Now I will balance it. Loss will be 14 lakh and rest of the process will run on similar lines. Is it clear to you? External reconstruction is not going to give you any problem. Now someone was telling it is not important chapter. Actually, it is highly important chapter. Even this small chapter, although earlier we did purely India 103 and over there, lots of questions. One question came in the examination of 15 marks carrying what we call three three sub parts so don't be under this phobia that these are not important they are very important chapter and consistently questions are striking from this particular chapter also correct it is also part of india 103 so whole when i am talking about we have already seen almost every year questions are striking and all these questions recent examination question 7.1 and you will also see another question correct this is 7.2 and then and this question was in your December 2023 new syllabus examination question. So, don't be under this phobia. Every chapter is important. India 110 and India 103 are absolutely important chapter. And to be very honest with you, if we will pluck out after having completed all these chapters, as you know, I am going to start the uh, what we call review, past paper analysis series also, where I am going to discuss all the questions of 23, 24, no doubt about that. Is it clear? But first, even though I am going to discuss these questions later on when I will take up the past paper analysis series, I would love to actually pay attention towards this particular question, December 2023. Now, in this question, it is given following are the extracts of the balance sheet of two companies, Beta Limited and what we call Delta Limited as at 31st of March 2023. Is it clear to you or not? I have not only one session, I've already told you, once we shall have finished, once we have, we, we shall have covered what we call India 103, today it will be covered, correct? Then we will take up, and last year, if you'll see, there was a question from internal reconstruction, correct? Anyway, internal reconstruction is also considered as a part of India 103, but we have kept it as a separate chapter. Anyway, then India 110, then share based payment India 102, then valuation of goodwill, valuation of share financial instruments. Once we shall have done all these chapters, then I will start the revision test series, correct? Revision test series, wherein we are going to take first 24 paper and then 23 paper. After that, we, we have created an MCQ, so MCQ sessions, which we are going to take chapter wise MCQs, we are going to pick up. This is how we are going to actually move along with this particular what we call uh, methodology to finish off this revisionary session. These revisionary sessions are not just you must have realized and you must have noted you have attended several marathon sessions. These are nothing but wastes of time. Don't go by that. 
go for that such session of such faculties where you are really getting some benefit out of that correct so you must have noted that if you have done all these sessions you need not require to now study amalgamation separately or for that distance in days 103. Whatever we are doing here, you, that is more than sufficient and that will see you what we call through the examination. Before, now we pick up this particular question which came, which is struck in December 23 new scheme examination. Some of you might be wondering, sir, why not 24 examination question because in this, unfortunately, in what we call 24 examination paper, there was not a question from what we call business uh, amalgamation. Is it clear to you? That is why we are starting with this one. In this case, first of all, you must have noticed many among you haven't done this particular topic and we have done this topic and we had done this topic. That is why our students were able to fare well. Correct? Now, Beta Limited and Delta Limited are the two companies and you can see property, plant and equipment and then financial asset. There is a category known as financial asset and it stands for generally investments. So under non-current asset, we have property, plant and equipment and then investments made by Beta Limited. In this company, see here, acquiry, acquiry company hold the share in purchasing company. I have already written the title also. That means acquiry company is already having what we call 20,000 share in Delta Limited and they have paid rupees 2 lakh to acquire 20,000 shares of Delta Limited. Then we have got under current asset only inventory. Even under current asset, there is another category known as financial assets. That is trade receivable 3 lakh and 1 lakh. Logically, in this particular question, there are trade receivable inventory, trade receivable and inventory. And then there is investment and besides that property, plant and equipment. Correct. And then you are being given here. Uh, equity and liability equity share capital is 10 lakh 6 lakh then other equity under other equity there is reserves and then we have only current liability trade payables now when we we'll go through the question we find over here beta limited was to absorb delta limited on the basis of intrinsic value of the share and purchase consideration was to be discharged in the form of fully paid share Correct. Those students who were under the impression that this particular chapter is not important, I am very sure they couldn't have done this particular question. Correct. So pay attention. A sum of 40,000 is owed by Beta Limited to Delta Limited. Now you know the treatment. The its treatment will be done in the books of acquirer entity Beta Limited. And your entry will be reduce the liability. Sundry creators account debit 40,000 to debtors account in the books of purchasing company. Also included in the stock of Beta Limited 60,000 worth of goods supplied at cost plus 20%. You must have noticed that similar sort of question was already available in our study notes. So, and same sort of question is struck in the examination. And now you know the treatment of this. In this case, 60,000 worth of goods have been, first of all, what is written? Also included in the stock. That means in our stock, 60,000 worth of goods are there. That means and, and these are unsold goods. And profit margin will be 20 by 120 because rate is cost plus 20%. Is it clear to you or not? Sir, notes link is not working. You do one thing immediately. Uh, the notes are already available in my channel also, my Telegram channel also. Correct? Uh, I will also write, uh, I will pin the message where I will again actually just go through my channel Sanjay, Wil Sanjay Wilkins YouTube uh, sorry telegram channel I will provide the link in the message also don't worry 60,000 goods supplied by Delta Limited at cost 20% absorption was completed on 31st of 3 2023 so this is the date of the balance sheet on this particular date actually absorption has completed that means this company has taken over the business of Beta Limited has taken over the business of Delta Limited you are required to prepare consolidated or beta limited after acquisition of data limited. So on the date of acquisition, we are supposed to prepare the prepare the balance sheet. That means this question is of in AS 103 number one. At the same time in this question, there is intercompany holding number two. And because on the date of acquisition, when we do the consolidation, we have to do is as per in AS 103. Is it clear to you or not? Somebody told me reserve account. Uh, you told me reserve account is 10,000. You are writing. Let me check it up. What is the amount of reserve? Uh, 6, 7, lakh, 10. Reserve is 1, lakh, 10,000. What you are writing? Okay, achy, you have already given me the answer first. I will come over to that. Now, first of all, as usual, 
what I need to do because in this particular case it is clearly stated that purchase consideration was to be discharged in the form of fully paid shares and on the basis of intrinsic value of share. Quite obviously the first thing first we need to find out the intrinsic value in which company investment has been made and in which company investment hasn't been made. First of all you have to consider this. Is it clear to you? Investment has been made in the books of Delta Limited. Actually in this question it is written actually I am extremely sorry I am extremely sorry actually this title is wrong in this particular question acquirer company has made the investment I am extremely sorry actually in the heat of uh, what we call tiredness I forgot actually this is written in the column of Delta Limited and no one among you actually corrected me. See this is written in the column of Delta Limited. Actually this is a case where acquirer company is having shares. The case which we just did today. Here the acquirer company is having 20,000 shares in Beta Limited. I am extremely sorry. So in this case acquirer entity is having shares in acquiring entity entity. So that means in which company investment has been made, beta limited investment has been made. So that is the reason first of all we are going to compute the intrinsic value of shares of beta limited as I just told you. So we will write their property, plant and equipment, their all their assets, inventory, trade receivable. Then I will subtract trade payable, net assets will be 12 lakh. Obviously no preference share capital is there, that means entire net asset belongs to equity shareholder. I will divide it by number of equity share to get intrinsic value of share 12. Now I will come over to Delta Limited. Their property, plant and equipment is 5 lakh. And they have purchased 20,000 shares of acquirer entity. And intrinsic value of acquirer entity is 12. So value of their investment will be considered as 2,40,000. Then rest of the things you are going to write inventory, trade and then you will subtract what we call trade receivables. Correct. Finally, you will get uh, trade receivable. Then you will subtract trade payable. Sorry, 190. Then finally, you will get 7,50,000 and intrinsic value will be equal to 7.5. Once you have determined the intrinsic value of the share, the next thing is that we need to find out the amount of consideration and how many number of shares which we are supposed to deliver to the what we call acquiry entity. We are the acquirer entity. First of all, I have because we have already gone through net assets method that means we know the amount of purchase consideration 7,50,000. So purchase consideration actually is 7,50,000 no doubt about that. If I purchase consideration is 7,20,000 I can divide it by 12 to know how many number of share we are supposed to issue. We are supposed to issue 62,500 shares. Correct. But out of 62,500 shares, 20,000 shares are already held by the other entity. So now we are supposed to make a pay, supposed to issue only 42,500 shares. And intrinsic value of our share is 12. So 42,500 share at the rate of 12 total purchase consideration will be considered 5,10,000. Is it clear to you or not? Another important point is in this question you are being asked to determine the amount of purchase consideration and because you are supposed to prepare the consolidated balance sheet of the date of the acquisition as you know what else you need to do you need to find out the amount of goodwill. In order to find out the amount of goodwill what we are supposed to do, we take into account the total net assets, total net assets, total net assets of acquiry entity. We have already seen that their net asset is equal to 7,50,000 asset minus liability. So on the date of acquisition net assets of acquiry entity 750, generally out of that net asset we pluck out the share of non-controlling interest holder. But in this question there is no non-controlling interest holder. Are you getting my point or not? There is no non-controlling interest holder. So that means all the share belong to us. Now that means entire 7,50,000 worth of assets on the date of acquisition belong to acquirer entity. Then we will compare it with the amount of purchase consideration. We get gain on bargain purchase because amount of consideration is lesser than the what we call net assets. Is it clear to you? Then after this, we can easily prepare the what we call balance sheet. I have already told you in order to prepare the balance sheet, you are the acquirer entity. Your items will appear at the same value, 10 lakh, 5 lakh, and then you will simply write 15 lakh. 5 lakh worth, you will simply consolidate it, consolidate because all the assets of the Delta Limited now will be taken over. So 10 lakh plus 5 lakh. 
as far as investment is concerned you are not having any investment and the value of investment which you are going to take over now because you are taking over all the assets of the acquiring entity and their present value of investment is 2 lakh 40 so that is why you are going to add 240 and then you are going to reflect it later on then inventory will be 2 lakh plus 2 lakh what is the amount actually this amount of investment this amount of investment i will just tell you why i haven't written here i will also explain this also because when i am going to pass this entry in the books of in the books of acquirer entity is it clear to you it is very important okay i will let me finish it off then i will explain it also inventory i will simply consolidate but unrealized profit of 10000 10000 which somebody told me already see actually there is unrealized there is concept of unrealized profit in this particular question 60000 worth of goods are in the stock correct and profit margin is 20 by 120 so unrealized profit will be equal to 10000 so this 10000 you are going to write over here is it clear to you or not you are going to write it over here so inventory 2 lakh plus 1 lakh minus 10000 you are going to write 2 lakh 90000 the unrealized profit will be subtracted from the consolidated amount of inventory number 1 and this time entry will be profit and loss account debit profit and loss account debit to stock account profit and loss account debit to stock account so value of stock will fall by 10000 in the consolidated balance sheet first add the items stock then subtract unrealized profit right to 90 but it will also create what we call profit and loss account debit balance that debit balance will be written under other equity i will let you know then it is written trade receivable simply combine them and those among you who have already done consolidation so many times they know that even intercompany transactions will be subtracted intercompany transaction will be subtracted from debtors and creditors both so that is why the net figure will be over there ultimately you will get a total of 21 lakh 50 thousand in this question there is no goodwill i told you investment will not find place in the outer column even though we are taking over their investment i will tell you why correct don't worry about that now our own share capital is 10 lakh and we have issued 42,500 shares we will write here face value so our share capital will increase and total share capital in the consolidated balance sheet will be of this much remember one thing while preparing consolidated balance sheet we never write the share capital of what we call other entity because we are not taking over their share capital because we are issuing 42,500 shares of 10 each at the rate of 12 that been at rupees 2 premium I will write also 85,000 security premium as I told you profit and loss account the profit and loss account see here i have written 2 lakh 40 thousand why i have written 2 lakh 40 that is the main reason this 2 lakh 40 thousand will get cancelled and that is the reason actually your profit and loss account will get debited due to this because other entity correct you have made the uh, other entity has made the investment in your other entity so that investment need to be cancelled and when we cancel it our profit and loss account gets debited that is why i have written pnl 2 lakh 40 thousand then coming over to the reserves reserves are actually 2 lakh our reserves are 10 lakh and here i have written profit and loss account you can also write reserves account also so whatever balance is there that reserves can be written pnl or reserve also so you simply subtract it from the reserves your net balance in the reserves now will be equal to 1 lakh 90 thousand correct Right, sir, Beta Limited was to absorb in this particular question. Let me go through once again. Following are the balance sheet of the two companies. Beta Limited was to absorb Delta Limited. Yes, Beta Limited was to absorb. It means Beta Limited is your acquirer entity. Now you have written correctly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Srinivasa Rajagopal, absolutely correct. Beta Limited in this particular case happens to be the acquirer entity which I told you in the very uh, in the starting is itself. Now coming over to the next point, I told you actually in order to extract the unrealized profit, there are two treatment of unrealized profit. One, it will be while preparing consolidated balance sheet. One, it will be subtracted from stock, and second, you can subtract it from PL, you can subtract it from reserves, whatever you may like. Correct. 
and then in this case there was gain on bargain purchase also to the extent of 2 lakh 40 thousand and if if acquiring entity has made investment in your company to cancel that investment we pass an entry profit and loss account debit to investments account so on account of that our profit and loss account will get a debit balance that is why i have written here p and l cancellation of investment 240 and this investment will get cancelled that is why nothing will come over here this was the point now gain on bargain purchase 2 lakh 40 and then trade creators there is intercompany transaction intercompany transaction will be subtracted from both liability side and from asset side also this was this is very interesting question and you need to do it again by yourself to comprehend it better further there is another question in this particular case correct there is another question in this particular case sun limited and moon limited unfortunately this question which we have included actually this question came in the old syllabus correct so honestly speaking you need not require to do this question now correct you you need not require to do this question now because i don't think that sort of question or that sort of things now are compatible to the actual guidelines of India S103. So try to actually avoid this one. Is it clear to you? So you need to actually do in this particular question, this particular one and all the other question which we have already done earlier under India S103. One more thing and final thing before I wrap it off. Although you may not be needed such things, but still, still, as a professional student, you need to understand all these things. So far, what we have learned in this particular chapter, one, there is an acquiry entity and of course there is an acquirer entity. Acquirer entity also known as purchasing company. Correct? We have learned how the accounting is done. I told you there are no, what we call no standard which we follow while doing accounting under acquiry company. Only general principles of accounting are adopted to do the accounting. In case of acquirer entity, many students were messaging me, sir, when to apply India S103 and when to apply AS14. Many among you are having a bit of confusion regarding that. I told you if the question clearly states, if the question clearly states, If the question clearly states that pass entries presuming it to be a case of amalgamation or absorption then you will have to apply AS14 to do the accounting in the books of acquirer. But chances of this are very less now to be very honest with you. In the upcoming examination I don't think I don't think actually you are going to get any question where the question will state that uh, pass entries presuming it to be a case of amalgamation. So 99% question will be silent and you will have to adopt India S103. But presuming, even though chances are even 0.1%, presuming the question states that it is a case of amalgamation or pass entries after the amalgamation led or after the absorption, if question states that, in that case, you need to have a bit of idea regarding AS14, how the entries will be passed in the books of purchasing company. In the books of purchasing company, when we will pass the entry by applying AS14, first of all, we need to know whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, amalgamation in the nature of purchase, or whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. This is important point. When we apply AS14 to do accounting in the books of purchasing company, it is important for us to know whether the case is of amalgamation in the nature of purchase or whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. How a case becomes a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, AS14 states that when purchasing company is taking over all the assets and liabilities at book value, Payment is being given to equity shareholders only. Payment is giving payment is given to equity shareholders in equity shares only. I have written all these in the notes. You can go through the notes. In the earlier stages in the theoretical part, I have written all these things. Don't worry about that. So a case will be considered as a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger 
when purchasing company will take over all the asset at book value liabilities at book value number 1 number 2 it is decided that equity shareholders will be issued only equity share preference shareholder may be issued anything they may be issued cash equity share debenture whatever but equity share must be issued equity share only and third important point generally it is not given in the question so you cannot apply that but still just for your knowledge sake standard says that 90% of the shareholders 90% of the shareholder of vendor company of vendor company must be willing to become the shareholders of purchasing company actually this will never be given in the question that so many shareholders are willing to become so you cannot apply this but this is one of the characteristic so logically if all these things are present generally these two things should be present in order to see whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or purchase you have to see whether all the assets and liabilities are being taken over at book value and equity shareholders are being given payments by way of equity shares only if these two criteria are there presume it as a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger if any of these condition get violated then it becomes a case of purchase for example in the question some revised values are given or fair values are given or revalued figures are given or equity shareholders are receiving cash and equity shares or preference share so then it will be considered as a case of purchase 99.99% amalgamation is in the nature of purchase only but under rare circumstances it could be amalgamation in the nature of merger also now the next point is that once you are aware of it suppose the question in the examination comes suppose see actually when we pursue i have already told you professional course it is important that we cannot leave any gray area it is important that we have to cover up all all the points all the points whether it is significant or insignificant important point is that you cannot simply go into the examination thinking that this is important chapter this is not an important chapter this way you are going to land up yourself with lots of problems so if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase because 99.99% it will be a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase in this case how the entry will be passed all the first of all first entry you are going to pass like this business purchase account debit business purchase account debit business purchase account debit to liquidator of vendor company to liquidator of vendor company it means it means first of all here you will write the amount of purchase consideration it means you have acquired the business from the liquidators of vendor company what we mean by liquidators as you know when a company gets liquidated court appoints a liquidator and generally liquidator now takes charge of the vendor company and dealings are done with the liquidator by the acquirer entity so this entry means actually we have acquired the business of the acquirer entity at this amount and we are supposed to make a payment to the vendors this amount this is the meaning of this entry then we are going to write here all the assets taken over correct whatever assets which you have taken over of course at revised value if any because it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase so what at whatever value you are taking them over you are going to write then you are going to write here liability taken over liability is taken over then you will write here to business purchase indirectly this entry means assets minus liability means net assets so we have acquired the net assets now we are comparing it with the amount of purchase consideration business purchase here stands for purchase consideration so now we will get what we call the difference the difference if it appears towards this side will be considered as goodwill correct and if the difference would come over here you will write here capital reserve because under as 14 we use the term capital reserve not gain on bargain purchase is it clear to you then you will pay to the liquidator final your final entry will be payment to liquidator when you will make the payment to the liquidator your entry will be like this liquidator account debit correct liquidator of vendor company with the amount of purchase consideration you will write this entry and then you will write the various modes of payment through which you are making the payment for example you are disposing of the purchase consideration through cash or through share capital 
or through issue of debenture, you will write all those payments here. Is it clear to you? Now, now another important point is that if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, what will be the difference? The first entry will be the same. First entry will be business purchase account debit to liquidator account. Even the second entry will be almost same. Asset account debit but at book value. Liability account but at book value. And here we will take into account all the reserves. Such reserves which are appearing in the books of vendor company we will not take them over, but we will create such reserves from our own resources. That is known as creating the identity of the reserves which are appearing in the books of acquiry entity. Technically, under merger, when we do the accounting, it is known as pooling interest method. It is known as pooling interest method, similar to common control. Is it clear to you? So all the assets you will take over, you will write the liabilities, but at book value, besides that, you will write the reserves. Correct, which are appearing. For example, there is PL balance, there is general reserve. You will also write PL to general reserve. Then you will write here business purchase account. Business purchase account. And then if the difference comes towards the debit side, you can write reserve, general reserve, or PL. It is up to you. That means in case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. Difference is not debited to goodwill or capital reserve, rather it is debited or credited to general reserve or PL only. It is your choice whether you want to debit it to general reserve or profit or loss or support that distance. If the difference comes towards what we call credit side, again you can credit it to general reserve or profit or loss account. And last entry will be same. So there is hardly any difference you must have seen. I have already told you 99.99% those among you who, who have already subscribed to our regular courses. Now you need not require to study amalgamation only this much portion you did. Do. Is it clear to you? 99.99% chances are there that question will not come in the examination where they are going to ask you to pass the entries with respect to amalgamation. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Right. So these are the things which as a professional student you need to know. Now in the next session we'll go off with India's 110, correct? And we'll pick up internal reconstruction later on. Although since last four attempts we are noticing that each year question is coming from internal reconstruction. But first we'll pick up India's 110 and then at a later stage we'll cover internal reconstruction. Now as far as notes are concerned, Look into the message tomorrow in this video itself. Correct. I will pin the message and then from there you can uh, actually uh, get the link to download the notes of India's 110 also. Right. And further, I've already told you once we have finished up all the major chapters, then simultaneously I will start revision test papers not revision test paper, that is revision of test paper in the sense means 24 attempt and 23 paper we will cover up in the examination and simultaneously I will do NDS also. Is it clear to you? Simultaneously I will do NDS. For example, one hour I will take RTP and sorry, test papers and one hour I will devote towards NDS. Is it clear to you? This way round we are going to actually get. Which are the cases? Reserves, little bit confused. I'm telling you if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger only or for that instance common control and reserves are having positive balances, then you will have to brought them forward. Actually, it is wrong to say brought them, brought them forward because generally we never take the reserves. Only things that we have to create actually reserves, such reserves from our side. Is it clear to you? So this is how we are going to go about through these sessions. So looking forward to meet you in the next session as usual. And so nice to have your, your presence and kindly keep on what we call giving us messages. Write your messages on the YouTube comment boxes so that others also get a little bit of zeal to actually go through these sessions. Correct? Okay then, on such note, we take leave of you and God bless.